right. I'm getting this thing cracking. Making sure my sound and all that stuff is together. How y'all doing? We're live. We're back on my other channel. We're live, family. We're here. We're here, ready to do our thizzle. We're back on the Tariq radio channel. Glad to have everybody tuning in. I'm on time. I'm on time tonight. I am on time tonight. Usually I'm a few minutes late. Sometimes I'm a lot of minutes late, but I'm here. I'm on time tonight, and I'm ready to chop up game. What the family? What the hell is that? Okay, that's my, my ice water. I got my ice water ready. You dig? So I'm on the Tariq radio ready channel. Hold on. All right. So I'm ready. It's, it's Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to everybody. What's up? We're back. We're back. We're here. Shout out to everybody in the room. Folks are coming on up in here. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you have not subscribed to this channel. Subscribe to this channel right now. And also, still subscribe to my Tariq Time channel too, just in case any type of fuckery ensues. But I am here. I'm just letting folks get up in the room. Let me let everybody know on Twitter that I'm live right now. I told everybody I'd be live in like 15 minutes, but I'm here. I'm here. Um, live right now. So join the app. All right. All right. So what's going on, family? We're here. Hope everybody had a, a great Mother's Day. Uh, I saw a lot of people posting Mother's Day celebrations on. Um, Instagram and other places and all that good stuff. So shout out to the moms out there. Shout out to um, the baby moms, the single moms. Shout out to y'all. Um, hope y'all go find some niggas. Shout out to the, the wives. Shout out to the widows. Shout out to the grandmothers. You did? And somebody just sent me a... Uh, um, a link of something that's tying into today's show. Um, I'm talking about the modern day blackface. I'm going to talk about that. Somebody just sent me a link talking about J. Cole. J. Cole calls SoundCloud rappers exaggerated versions of black stereotypes. So I like when the universe is on the same page because that's exactly what I wanted to talk about tonight. I wanted to, to really touch on that. We're talking about the new form of blackface. And black folks, we're going to have to start circling our wagons to a certain degree. Sakwase Mabule. Mabule. Shout out to my Haitian cats in the room. How's the lighting here? Feels like the lighting is off for some reason. Let me. How's my lighting? I got to get my lights together. I got to get my feng shui together. I don't feel like my feng shui is on fleek. Like it's, a, as the kids would say. <laughs> Gotta make sure my lighting is right. Turn up the volume. How's the volume? My volume good? My volume should be good. It's hella dark. Lighting's not bad. The lighting is good. How's the sound? Reading a little yellow here. The sound is good. Okay, somebody said the sound was kind of janky, but no, the sound is good. It's just a nigga who's trying to listen on a T-Mobile. All right, we're good. Thank you, family. Thank you very much. We're good. Yeah, I got my Freeway Rick shirt, my man. Um, Freeway Rick gave me this. Shout out to um, the real Freeway Rick. And I like the rapper Rick Ross, but the real Freeway Rick gave me this shirt. Shout out to Freeway Rick. Uh, yeah, I saw that, um, Sister Tubman, I saw that Yo Vicky chick dissing Snoop, and this is the problem. Um, I'm going to play the audio of that. And this is what I want to talk about. We let these people, it's beyond people being culture vultures. It's beyond that. It's beyond culture vultures. You have cultural trash 
being embraced by black society. And that's a major problem. We have black people out here in, in embracing the trash of other societies. And we're going to have to start circling the wagon. It's time to cut out the fuckery business. Black people, we have a habit of allowing too many of us to be a part of team fuckery from these other groups. Because we allow it with so many people within our own group. We open the door for everybody else to bring in the fuckery. And the nonsense and the backhanded disrespect. Now, a lot of y'all know about this this, this 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 ignorant ass chick named Wo Vicky. She's one of these internet people. Some some people say she's kind of slow. I don't know. But you have a lot of these people who are actually embraced by black people. See, we embrace some of these folks. Like for example, that cash me outside. How about that? You know, you see these little dirt bags. And I don't give a fuck if they're underage because they're reflections of their racist ass parents. The black experience is acting like a buffoonish stereotype of what blackness is. What these people do is engage in completely degrading stereotypes that black people really don't embrace as a whole. We look down on some of the ratchet niggatry, but these people, these outsiders, they embrace that, and that becomes the black experience. That becomes them embracing the black experience. And we have to understand that's a new form of blackface. That is a new form of blackface. It's a form of disrespect. It's a form of them mocking black society. And that type of buffoonery gets embraced by other buffoons. See, it's, it's house cleaning time, black people. We're going to have to start cleaning house because things are getting serious with these white supremacists out here. They're coded up. They're in global attack mode. This is a, a race war that they're engaging in where they're, they're not just going to get us back on a plantation. They're trying to liquidate black people, meaning wipe us the fuck out. And they're using this type of blackface fuckery to keep us stagnated. Because once we start embracing their fuckery, then they come in with the disrespect. And then once they start disrespecting, they start taking over. You understand that? And we, in serious black society, a lot of times we laugh at some of the the ridiculousness of the woe vickies and the little pumps and all these people. But have you turned on your radio lately? See, that's the problem. We don't take these folks seriously. We just think, okay, they're just a bunch of dumbass folks being stupid. Then all of a sudden, you turn the radio on, who do you hear all day? You hear... The little pumps and the Takashi's and the Post Malone's. You hear all this other shit. And the thing is, black people are so scared to call out white supremacy because you think there's a check waiting on you around the corner. Somebody's going to give you a check. You understand me? We're so busy trying to chase some bullshit ass paper that you're going to spend within a month if you do get it. But that's our problem. We're too afraid to call this shit out. Especially a lot of people in the industry. Because like if you are in the industry, you get a record deal. The record label, they're making you do duets with these folks. They're making you legitimize these people. When you get on a label, you get them calling you in a the room. They're like, hey, black rapper, I need you to do a, a feature with Wo Vicky. You're like, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's part of your contract, nigga. You want a budget, don't you? You want, a, you want another budget? You dig? So you're getting forced to legitimize these people and 
The thing is, we got to stop legitimizing fuckery. Shout out to the people like J. Cole, who has the balls to call these assholes out. But the thing is, you let these people in and they do these little goofy videos and and shame on Worldstar. Shame on you guys for promoting the Woe Vickies and all these folks. But this is this is a clip of the Woe Vicky chick, and I'm not I'm not about to show her video, but I'm gonna play the audio because I, I don't want to give her no shine. Y'all know who she is. Y'all seen her different clips of this real goofy white chick who claims that she's part black. That's an, that's that more that's that Rachel Dolezal shit again. That's that Rachel Dolezal stuff again where these people are claiming to be transracial. Watch that. They're supposed to be black. And they're doing the same thing to us as they're doing to the Native Americans. I want to I wanna hip y'all to something, black people. When you have people from the dominant white society start to claim your heritage, that means that group is on their way out the door. Let me say that again. When you have the white supremacists starting to openly claim your heritage, that means the original people are on their way out the door. Just like back in the late 1800s, early 1900s, when they started to wipe out the original Native Americans, because I've been going in on these pretendians lately, as y'all have noticed, 90% of the Native Americans that you see now are not real Native Americans. They are, they're pretendians. These are $5 Indians whose families and ancestors paid money to get on the Indian roll. If they are native, they got such a minute, small amount of native in them, their whiteness has absorbed that. That's why most of them look white today. Native Americans did not look like that before the 1900s. That's why you cannot find any photographs because they had photography in the late 1800s. You cannot find photographs of white-looking Native Americans. It didn't exist. The minute they started doling out land, everybody started getting light all of a sudden. And then everybody, the white supremacists started claiming Cherokee. And that's a code, too. When these white supremacists claimed Cherokee, because those Cherokees were very anti-black. They were some big slave owners back then. Many of those Cherokees, because they they had been mixed in with the white supremacists early on, that's why they became part of what's called the five civilized tribes. Civilized means you're, you're embracing white supremacy. The tribes who embrace white supremacy and anti-blackness, well, those were civilized tribes. You understand? Because that's how you become embraced by the dominant white supremacist society. You have to have an anti-black disposition. So those Cherokees, those white supremacists love claiming that because those Cherokees fought for the Confederacy. And as a matter of fact, when the um, the Civil War was happening, you know, they, they actually took up arms against the United States government. And their argument was, well, we're not going to give up our black slaves because they had black slaves. We're like, we're a sovereign nation, so we can keep our slaves. We ain't got nothing to do with what y'all got going on. So they, they were fighting the United States government in order to keep black people enslaved. As, as a matter of fact, there was a major, there was not a major, but there was a slave revolt in 1842, I think, where black enslaved Africans rebelled against the Cherokee. They were running and trying to get to Mexico, and it was the Cherokee and the Choctaw, and all of them got together to capture those runaway blacks. So we need to know history. We need to know history. But the point is, they try to, the Native people now, they try to align themselves with us, with this, well, we, we're brothers in the struggle. We all struggle together. No, you did Not you. You ain't no real Native American. You're not a real Native American. The, the Natives who struggled were struggling because of race. And you white. And then they, they pretend to be mad when you say that, but they know it's the truth. But the thing is, when they start claiming your heritage, that, that means they're wiping out the original people. And that's exactly what they did. That's why all of the Native Americans now are pale. You were not, there were no pale Native Americans. 
There is a reason why they called them Indians. They called them Indians because they look dark and black, just like the people of India. That's why when they saw him, Christopher Columbus was like, oh shit, I'm in India. Yeah, yeah. We made it. We made it to India because that's where he was going. They were trying to get spices. He left Spain and Italy and all that shit to go to Spain to get spices to season that fucked up food up there. Because when the Moors were expelled, and, and Christopher had a couple of Moors on the ship with him. And I'm, I'm digging all over history here, but I'm, I'm giving you some side anecdotes. But there, there was a reason why they thought that they were in India because they saw them black-ass Indians running around here. You understand? And like I said, when people start to claim your heritage, and I want y'all to hear this clip too. I'm going to play this clip about what's going on in Namibia before I play the whole Vicky thing. But I put this clip on Twitter earlier. Now, we know about the white supremacists being in South Africa, um, ruling as a minority, and, you know, there's conflict there. Black folks should have been gotten them out, just like they did in Zimbabwe. But a lot of folks don't know, in Namibia, right now, you have a small enclave of white supremacists who's controlling a lot of the resources there while the rest of the black people are living in squalor. So all over Africa, we have that dynamic, that apartheid dynamic, where you have a white minority ruling the black majority. And black folks should have been got their asses out of there. And that's what they're, they're programming us right now to live in an apartheid state. They're getting us used to a police state where there's going to be extra judicial violence if we um, um, are rebellious against the oppression. But I want, I want y'all to hear this clip of this white supremacist German in Namibia. Listen, listen to what he's saying. Listen to it. Johann is a descendant of one of the roughly 30,000 Germans that stayed in Namibia after German colonization ended in 1915. This white population live in enclaves of relative luxury, fencing out the majority black population from land they claim is theirs. So, you hear that now? The, the Germans, they claim the land is theirs. Here they go with that. This is our land shit. They claim the land is theirs. All right. So am I suddenly, just because of my color, then as a reverse racism, uh, am I not a Namibian, you know? So, no, this is an old white German saying, well, because of my color, am I not a Namibian? I mean, is this reverse racism? This is the, the Jedi mind trick they're running on niggas. <laughs> this German Namibian, he said, look, I'm a Namibian. This is my land. I'm a Namibian. This is reverse racism to say I'm not a Namibian. White as snow. He looks like Jerry Heller. Hold on. You know, I mean, where do you want to start? Do you want to say all oh, the white people are not Africans? Yeah, but we, 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 my, my grandfathers came here in 1904, and my mother was born here really a few totally Namibians. So I, 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 to me, I'm a Namibian. He feels Namibian, but Germans here are sealed off from most Namibians socially. And despite having been here for generations, they usually don't speak any of the indigenous languages. If I meet a young guy here on the phone... And that's how it is. Again, when they disenfranchise people and wipe them out, they'll claim their heritage. It's just nothing for them. That's how they do. If you don't do anything about it, that's why you got to do something about that. You got to shut that shit down. Because once you let these people come in here and get a foothold and you let them stay long enough and dominate you long enough, then they start talking about, well, you know what? This is my land. This is my land, and I'm, I'm, a, real, I'm a real African. Are you going you're gonna to use reverse racism on me? See, that, that's that colonizer talk. And it's too many African people there to let that shit go down. This whole passive shit where you just sit up and let these people run amok in your country and just run Jedi mind tricks on you, black folks globally are going to have to wake up from that. You globally are going to have to wake up from that. And they're running the same game on us with these Wovickies and all that shit. These Negroes that come around us talking that yo, yo, yo shit and we like, oh, we're going to invite you to the barbecue. You, sa you sound like the black Namibians. You're letting these people in. They're going to get a foothold in there. 
And once they get their weight up, then they start disrespecting you. Just like this Woe Vicky chick, this little goofy ass internet chick who makes dumb videos and black folks embrace it. And then they start, she starts dissing iconic black folks like Snoop. Snoop is an icon in the music game. So she's standing here with two remedial looking Negroes who's co-signing her. Now, one of the dudes, to his defense, he kind of looks slow, like he's remedial. But this is how they get down. This is her. Hold on. Fuck you, Snoop Dogg. You a pussy me. Put your heart back here. You look all that. 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 We shootin' Dracos, let that bitch go. Let do it, do the booty ass, 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 nigga. I piss on your bitch face. Okay, and I can, that's I, that's that's all I can play. These now she got two dumb Negroes standing there doing the insulting for her. Yeah, let, let me let me talk about this these niggas for a minute. Let, let me say this: Black men, we're gonna have to get to a point where we start g checking niggas. We got a the, the long. Lost art of G-checking dudes. That's going out the window. We got a lot of young dudes out here who have no direction. We are going to have to G-check niggas who engage in utter fuckery. Now, people called her out on this and then she made a bullshit apology video like, Oh, I'm sorry. We were just playing. We just be doing stuff for the internet. Don't let them run that game on you. Don't let people like that run that game on you. And shame on the two little Negroes hanging with this chick. See, the problem is you got these little goofy dudes out here. They've never been G-checked in their lives because they grew up with their moms and your grandma. So you ain't never had a grown-ass man really check you on dumb shit. This is why it's important to have grown-ass men out here. Ladies, let me talk to the ladies. Ladies, this is why it's important for you to have a family structure. You need to get with people, appropriate with people who you think it will be there to help you raise these fucking kids. And G-check them because the this single parent shit, it ain't working. We got a bunch of dudes out here who's running a muck. And ain't nobody checking them on their dumb shit. You can't do everything. Let's get off that superwoman plantation mammy shit where you're supposed to do everything because that whole I'm supposed to raise these kids by myself, that's that's plantation shit. That's what's that's some shit black folks have picked up on the plantation and you've internalized that, and that's not even natural running around trying to work and take care of kids. That shit is unnatural. That's plantation talk. Let's let that shit get on out the window. We got to have family structures here. We need family structures here so that we can have a balance when dealing with the youths. Are there dumb niggas who fuck you in balance? Of course, we know that. But the thing is, I'm, I'm getting on the sisters a little bit because you, you make the choice for a lot of stuff. There's a lot of things you can choose. There's a lot of things you can choose. And, I, and again, I'm... And I, I'm not going to place the blame solely on the women because there's a lot of dudes out here. You know you got kids and you know they need the game and you got to be on top of that. So I'm not excusing the dudes at all. Thank you, Christopher, for the for the Melanoid Nation donation. Shout out to the family who's given to the Melanoid Nation ministries. But men and women, because I'm not y'all not going to escape the the criticism here. Men and women, you got to do your part. Women. You better choose correctly. You better choose somebody who's capable of lacing your offspring with the proper game they need in order to come up so we don't have little fuck niggas out here acting a damn fool. Dudes, y'all niggas out here, don't knock up your fucking ratchets. That's another thing. Y'all niggas are, are thirsty as hell. You're shooting skeet up in any fucking thing. You knocking up the neighborhood rat who's a coon at her damn self because you a thirsty low-key coon. 
So y'all niggas are skeet up in anything, especially these broads like that. Y'all skeet up in these woe Vicky chicks. See, that the thirsty nigga shit is going to have to go. Black men, y'all too fucking thirsty out here. Black men are the thirstiest niggas on the planet. We This thing where we just fucking run up in any goddamn thing, that's going to have to go out the door. Niggas fuck anything that moves, any raggedy dirt bag from other society. No, that's going to have to stop. The thirst is going to have to chill. You're going to have to have some more game. Because that's, that's plantation buck shit right there. Because we shouldn't have young dudes that goofy and that susceptible to these dirt bags from other races coming in and flipping their mind and making them do whatever this, cause what happens is that they grew up to be the next Kanye. You dig? Kanye is a nigga who didn't really have no guidance around him. Now, once he got around my, my dude Dame and Jay, they gave him as much game as they could give him. His shit was right. You notice when, when, when Kanye was around Dame, because Dame is a real fucking dude. That's my brother. When Kanye was around people like Dame, Kanye wasn't on that stupid shit. Because people call Dame an asshole, but Dame would G-check niggas, though. You need people to G-check, folks. See, the thing is, if you G-check niggas, they make you seem like you're the asshole. You need niggas around to, to check bullshit from dudes. That's why I like Suge Knight. A lot of folks shit on Suge Knight. I like Suge Knight because Suge Knight... Stopped a lot of fuckery in the music industry. There's a lot of fuckery in the music industry. Like in the 80s, very early 90s. I mean, they would give these deals and they just, they'd fuck niggas silly with these record deals. They would fuck dudes silly with these record deals. So when people like Suge came in like, look, nigga, the, you, this artist over here, you ain't about to fuck him like that. You're not about to, to, to rate this artist like that. He was getting these deals straight. See, they don't tell you about that. Suge was getting these record deals straight. That's why a lot of folks wanted Suge to manage him. There was a reason why people weren't getting up under Suge because they were scared. They were getting money under Suge. You did? But the thing is, you know, in, when you start G-checking the fuckery, when you, you got a black man G-checking, you know, they make that seem like a problem. They don't want no black man in the mix stopping the bullshit because when you do that, you can't rape the youth. This is why I take my hat off to Matthew Knowles. Now, Matthew Knowles, he does a little goofy shit, but Matthew Knowles... He did make sure that, you know, his daughter got a good deal. He made sure the group had a good deal. You know, they kind of got him out the mix. But a father figure there, you notice a lot of these entertainers who had that father figure there, G-checking the bullshit, they were very successful. You look at Venus and Serena Williams. Richard Williams is a G. Their dad is a fucking G, man. Richard Williams, he didn't play that shit. He would G, he G check people. If he did um the girls did interviews and they start asking dumb questions, he'd go off on them. LeVar Ball. You notice they hate black men who will G check you. They don't Joe Jackson is another one. People try to shit on Joe Jackson. Joe Jackson, he was G checking niggas. Look, get these fucking dance steps together. Comb your afro, nigga. I'm going to whip you into shape. Now, they'll say, oh, I hated dad growing up. And, you know, Joe Jackson, he did a little coon shit here and there. But the thing is, you have that father figure there being tough and G-checking the fuckery. Jay Prince. Shout out to Jay Prince. You dig? Floyd Mayweather, his, his dad and his uncle. Tiger Woods' dad. You understand? That black father there making sure the youth isn't being taken advantage of. 
when you see a lot of these other athletes who don't have that, these niggas be getting raped silly because what happens is that you get these white dudes who are coming in acting like the father figure. They love a single mother. See, they love promoting single motherhood in white society for black folks. White society loves promoting single motherhood for us because then they can come in and be the father figures to the black community and rape us silly. They don't like no strong father in a black community. When they see a strong father, they go on alert. They do everything they can to ease him out the window, to get him out the door. They try to get those black dads out the door. That's why they hate LeVar Ball. They hate strong black fucking fathers, dude. Because white daddy wants to come in and be the Jerry Heller and, and put his arm around you and be like, hey, man, I'll be your dad. I know you didn't grow up with no mom, but just let me sign them contracts for you. And then you find out you broke after five years. You dig? That's like New Edition. New Edition is a great example. And, and, I, and I love Rick, though, that's all those dudes. But they grew up with single mothers. And they were getting fucked left and right out from contracts. Them dudes were getting fucked left and right out of them contracts. That's why it's important to have a male figure come in and shut down a lot of stuff. We got to have that family structure there. We got to really, really, really focus on a family structure. That goes for men, black men and black women. But the thing is, these woe Vickies and these low pumps and this little that, that, that catch me outside. How about that? See, black folks embrace that because we're so desperate for white validation. We allow that nonsense to happen. We allow these people to come in the mix because deep down, white is right. Anything white, we put value on. And we got to understand these people are mocking us. These people are mocking us. There's a little girl, a little Asian girl named Lil Tay. Have y'all seen a couple of her videos? She does the, and it's her mom. She has an Asian mom. I don't know what, I haven't seen her dad. Her dad might be either white or Asian. I think he's Asian too, but I know the mom is Asian. So this little girl, I don't know how old Lil Tay is. She looks like she's about like 10 or 11 or something. And little Tay, she does these little video clips of she's holding a stack of money and she's, yeah, motherfucker, yeah, nigga, I got all this money, nigga, yo, yo, yo. So what it is, her mom has her doing this, this caricature of black hip hop society. Now, her videos are very insulting to me. More so than Woe Vicky. Because her mom is putting her up to it. The mom is renting cars for this little girl to drive her. Look, I'm rolling the Bentley. Y'all niggas ain't rolling no Rolls Royce and Bentley like me, nigga. So it's really, really corny. It's really over. The her dad is white. I believe that. I believe that. I believe that. But her videos are mad corny. They're not funny. They're real goofy. And they're extremely insulting. And that's a form of blackface. Understand when people are insulting you, black folks, y'all have to stop embracing that. The world stars and all these people, the shade rooms, y'all got to stop sharing and embracing that type of fuckery. She said her mom was Caucasian. Now her mom, from what I've seen, her mom was Asian. That little girl is uh, she's she's Asian. She's clearly Asian or Asian mixed. And understand this. You cannot have a black child, 9 years old, doing a bunch of videos mocking stereotypical Asian dialect. If you had a black girl or child doing a bunch of videos with Chopstick and rice and your know, choing, 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 or anything stereotypical pertaining to Asian culture, 
they will never embrace that. The last thing they will do is embrace that. Lil Tay ain't white. I don't believe that kid is white. Somebody's Asian in her family. I think it's her mother. Her mom is Asian. Yeah, and I think her mom got fired from a realtor company because the mom was taking pictures in houses they didn't own. Her mom was like a real estate person. And they were, I guess she would take pictures in houses flaw, uh, flossing like it's her house. But the, the child is clearly Asian. And it's clearly a mockery of black society. It is a mockery. I know she ain't white. She's not white. It's clearly a mockery. And we got to watch people. We got to watch people who are, who we assume are black, but do not embrace black culture. And that brings us to Cardi B. Cardi B is another one. That's another one. Cardi B never really embraced black society. Cardi B always played that whole thing with she's a Latina. That was her whole angle. That she was some kind of Latina. Now I know her and this chick... Azealia Banks, they got into it, and Azealia Banks was really clowning her. But Azealia Banks, she's off her fucking rocker anyway. But Azealia Banks did make some hella good points, and I think um, Cardi B got so flustered, she um, made her accounts private. I mean, the chick really got in Cardi B's ass, calling her out for only recently kind of embracing blackness because people called her out on it. But she was on that whole Latina thing. But the thing is, the Latino community, they didn't embrace her. She's too ratchet. And we got to understand this. These people, they'll claim all these other cultures. But you notice, these cultures don't claim them. The Latino community never claimed Cardi B. Cardi B was on that, I'm, I'm Latina, I'm Latina, I'm Latina. But the Latino community, they don't fuck with her like that at all. You know, they got the Latin awards and all that. They know who to invite and who not to invite. And you notice this, when people, and I, I peeped this a long time ago, when people come around, black award shows, whatever, it's all the ratchetness comes out. But when they go to an event or something that's supposed to be part of their so-called culture, like Latin culture, they change their game. Up. For example, J-Lo. Now, J-Lo, remember, she went to an award show with Puff Daddy. She had that infamous dress with, you know, her titties and shit all halfway out. This very revealing dress. It was a black award show she went to that with on. She went, she had that on at a black award event. What was that award event J-Lo went to with that green dress with the, the titties and all that? It, was, it wasn't a Met Gala. This is years ago. This was back in the, the 90s, early 2000s. It was, it was a black award show. I know that. Was it the Grammys? No, it wasn't the Grammys. It was something else. Was it the Grammys? Okay, it was the Grammys. Okay. Or MTV Awards, one of them. But you went with Puffy. Was it the BMAs? Somebody look it up real quick. Somebody look it up. So charm, it was the Grammys. Are you sure, Charm? Some people say the VMA. Okay. So she went to the award show with the dress on, but when J Lo would go to the Latin Music Awards or whatever, they would be on their P's and Q's when it's the Latin Awards. It wasn't no ass and titties out. You would go with the utmost respect. You would respect the Latin culture. You understand? If you look at the Latin Awards, look at all of them. Look, people aren't dressed ratchet at the Latin Awards. It's the Grammys, okay. When it comes to the Latin Awards, you notice you don't see people with ass and titties out like that. They 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 behave a certain a whole different way. Look at some of these Latinas and all that. Look at how they'll dress at the Grammys and the VMAs and the MTV Awards. And then look at how they'll dress at the Latina, the Latin Music Awards. They own their P's and Q's. You dig? But the thing is, other groups, 
they don't allow that type of ratchetness and disrespect of their culture. But when it comes to black culture, we're the fuckery folks. We'll embrace everything. We got to get out that habit. We got to learn how to shut shit down and not be so gung-ho to have everybody come over to us with their filth and their garbage. Because ultimately, when they bring in garbage, they set up shop and then they start to dominate us. And we got to be unafraid to call them out. There was a white supremacist earlier when I was on um, Twitter. A white supremacist said to me, because I was criticizing something. Oh, yeah. I, the other day I made a tweet talking about how black people need to stop using the term people of color. We really need to stop using that term. It's a term that's used to undermine black progress. It's used to undermine black society. We got to stop using that term because other people of color don't do shit for us. And, you know, I had a me and Sean King, the activist, we had a disagreement. Sean was pointing out a couple of like one or two people that might have said something for black folks. But I don't count symbolic shit. I'm talking about who has gotten some stuff done, who has gotten laws passed, who's doing stuff. Nobody can point to other people of color in large numbers who have helped black society the way we help them. Because my thing is this, I, and I tell people all the time, I don't give a shit about what a people of color, a person of color, I don't know what that is. None of these groups are helping us and they've never helped us. We got to stop lying to ourselves. Yeah, I had a big disagreement with Sean on that. But that whole people of color thing and we got to cape for other groups, I'm not caping for no other groups because no other groups are caping for us in large numbers. We're, we're weakening ourselves by lending all of our energy to these other groups and it's never reciprocal. When the Native Americans had that pipeline thing going on, black people out there fighting and getting water hoses on them and shit, in large numbers, black people out there in the forefront of the damn immigration thing. Black people are always in the front of the white women's march. They had a whole bunch of black women out there right in the front. Black people at the front of the gay rights movement. They put us right in the front. The white gay rights, because that's what it's really about. White gay rights, because as a black person, you ain't got no fucking rights. So we're always in the forefront in large numbers for all these other groups, but we can't get them to do the same thing in large numbers, and they never did. Now, I had one dude, white guy, on Twitter tell me, because I asked people, I said, when has other groups in large numbers come out for black folks? This one white dude got on Twitter, he said, well, the Jewish community came through for black society during the civil rights movement. And he started with these arbitrary numbers. Over 50% of the Freedom Riders were Jewish. I said, dude, if you don't stop. Because part of the problem during the 1960s were that there were a lot of Jewish landlords who were practicing Jim Crow. They were a part of the reason why so many black people needed civil rights. Those Jewish store owners had Jim Crow policies. You understand? Yeah, you had some people in the Jewish community, but understand the Jewish community, they, they were never divorced from white society. They could still amalgamate into white society, meaning that they could still have some of the white supremacist views. And then he pointed to a couple of Jewish cats that got killed. And I said, hey, those cats who got killed, those were white sacrifices. They were an anomaly. They were not the norm. And that's that proves our point. You had a couple of people who did the right thing and fought the white supremacists openly. And they were hurt. They were harmed in doing so. But the thing is, they were an anomaly. The rest of the society that they came from, many of them in large numbers were practicing systematic anti-black racism. These are facts. As a matter of fact, 
it was in the 1960s, if we're going to get real, a lot of those major Jewish organizations, they were opposed to affirmative action. That's where the big, uh, the black Jewish coalition really splintered off then. A lot of the, the Jewish organizations in the 60s, they were hell bent against affirmative action. They were like, hey, we'll march, you know, we'll come out there and march with you for a couple of hours, but ooh, getting resources and, and benefits specifically for black folks? Mm, I don't know about that. See, when it comes to giving black folks some, all of a sudden people start, mm, boy, I gotta, boy, look at the time. You understand? We're talking facts right now. We're talking facts. Yeah, I don't do the, this. Is, this is no disrespect to anybody. I'm just talking facts. I, I always look at things from the context of history. I'm just talking history. You dig? So no groups have helped black people in large numbers. But we got this slave mentality where we're supposed to jump in front of the bullet for every damn group. And that's something that we're going to have to stop. We're going to have to stop using the wrong language. Stop using the term minority. Stop using the term people of color. Stop using the phrase black and brown. I keep hearing that phrase. I'm like, who in the fuck are the brown people? All these black and brown people are getting shot down by the police. Who's the brown people? I see the black people getting shot down and executed, unarmed black people. What brown people are you talking about? Who? Hispanics are labeled themselves as white. And the Hispanics, they're not getting shot down like that by these white supremacists. We got to stop being afraid. See, the thing is, listen, listen, black folks. Thank you, um... Sister, black men and women need to stop caping for non-black agendas. Real talk. Shout out to everybody's given to the Melanoid Ministries. But the thing is, the reason why black folks are just getting attacked nonstop and a lot of white people are not because of value systems. We got to understand value system. See, black people and white people value different things. See, people in the dominant white society, the white supremacists, can I touch on the lady who called the cops? I'll get on that in a minute. I'll get on that in a minute. But the white supremacists, they value certain things and black folks value certain things. The white supremacists, they value dominating non-white people. They value that more than anything. And you will die for what you value. You will die for what you value. And remember, Richard Spencer said, look, I don't value fairness and equality. I value dominance. I value winning. And that's the mentality of almost all white supremacists. They value domination. That's the thing that makes them get up in the morning. You understand? Black folks really need to get this. This is why you, you keep seeing these videos of these white supremacists calling the police on black people. Like that big, fat, dirty white supremacist woman up there in the Bay. And I, we need to get her name. And I want y'all to notice that. This white supremacist female was up at Lake Merritt calling the police on a group of black people barbecuing. She was making up some bullshit excuse. Well, yeah, they're barbecuing with charcoal and you're not supposed to have charcoal in this area. It's just making up some I'm, I'm white and I say so shit. And, you know, people were videotaping her and then she ran into the cops and started this whole fake ass cry. But understand the mindset of women like that. Now, she's a big fat fucking dirtbag loser. And white supremacy is all she has. They're hiding her name. And I want y'all to understand that. They're protecting that woman. They, the media knows what her name is. And law enforcement knows what her name is. But they've, they're protecting her. See, that's, what, that's the advantage she has. She knows that she has a code with other white supremacists. She knows there's a protection mechanism from other white supremacists with her. 
even though she's a big fat loser piece of shit, she knows that she has a protection mechanism. She knows there's no repercussions for her actions. And people like that, they get out of bed trying to figure out ways to dominate and mistreat black people. We don't really fathom that idea because we we think about getting up and doing things with our family, doing things with the with our friends. We think about other shit. So we can't fathom the idea of thinking about a, a whole powerless group of people who ain't doing nothing to us. We can't fathom that idea. But this is what white supremacists do every day. They wake up. That That's the thing that gets them out of bed. The thing that keeps them from committing suicide, from being depressed. When they're depressed, they're like, well, at least I'm not a nigga. I can go out here and I can call the police on a nigga and I can get a nigga killed. So I ain't doing that bad. Whenever a white supremacist feel down, they can get on that phone and call in a murder. And that's a pick-me-up. That makes them feel good. Because I want black folks to understand these white supremacists getting on the phone, calling the cops on black folks. They're doing it for the purpose of the police coming in blasting. They want the police to come in shooting. They're deliberately trying to get you killed. They know that these cops are trigger happy. They know that there's a code. That's why they, they're calling the police for any little reason. They want the police to show up and do work. They're deliberately trying to get you killed. I want black folks to understand that. My man, John Legend, he put out a tweet. He was like, oh man, white people, please stop calling the police on black people because they'll shoot us for any reason. And I'm like, well, John, shit, they know that. There's a sister who went to Yale. I did a lecture at Yale. And this sister went to sleep in the, uh, the, the commons area, a white supremacist female who has called the police on black people before. She's called the police on black people before. So she called the cops on this sister. And the cops came and they were kind of giving the sister a little hard time. And this white supremacist female, who's supposed to be a white feminist, and there's your sisters in the struggle, attacking another black woman. And this is all you bed wenches, all you blabbity blacks, and all you Negroes and negresses who work for the root. You thank them for these white supremacist feminists calling the cops on other black women because it's the blabbity blacks and the shea butters and the roots niggas. They're the ones who are helping to enable these white supremacists feminist. It's these Negroes, these Shea Butters, who's caping for these racist-ass white women who are, you're empowering them. You think by empowering these women and having them attack black dudes that you're going to be somehow safe. And they always circle back to the sisters too. They're not going to leave you out. I won't, let me, let me tell y'all something. Sisters, I want sisters to really understand this. The white supremacist female hates black women more than they hate black men. I'm going to say that again. The white supremacist female, they hate you more than they hate black men. Because the thing is, the white supremacist female, they can control the need. They could just make a phone call and just, you know, get him wiped out. That's what that's why that big fat piece of shit in the park was calling the police. They can just get rid of a brother quick, or they can use white woman magic on the nigga. So they can get a little value out of a Negro. Because most of those white supremacist females, they like to, to get a little inkling of a little dick in their life, a little soul pole. Even if they're racist as hell, they like to get a little taste of chocolate cock in their lives once in a while. Don't let them fool you. Some of the most racist women in college, they were bobbing on dick like they're bobbing for apples. But after college, they become conservative and become the next Sarah Palin or somebody like that. So they can get value out of a black dude, even if it's temporary sexual value. And, and again, this is why some of those white supremacist females, when they get, they get that dick when they're real young and they get it when they're real old. 
You dig? When they're fresh out of high school, they go to college and start bobbing on a couple of dicks, fuck a couple of football players. And if a football player didn't wipe them up, because they'll exchange, you know, they'll sacrifice living in a trailer park to get with a nigga so they can funnel some of those funds back into white society, if they can. But when they're young, they'll bob on them dicks, get their lives together, and then once they get older and they have no more value to white male society, then they'll go over to Jamaica, they'll take their asses over there to Africa somewhere, and start getting with brothers. Uh, I, I talked about this the other day where there was um, a white lady, this old Paula Dean looking white lady who was over there in Nigeria and a couple of Nigerian brothers, about three or four of them, and finessed this white woman out of half a million dollars. She's over there trying to get her some Nigerian dick and she ran up on the right ones and they started hitting them her little pockets up. They started finessing her ass. So they get a little bit of value out of a Negro male. You understand? You go to Jamaica. I've been to Jamaica, and that's all you see on the beach, some old white women out there getting them young brothers and then come home like nothing happened. It's all over Jamaica. But when it comes to the black female, the white woman and the black female, there's a vitriol there that you can't imagine. Those white supremacist women cannot stand a black woman. They only like a black woman who's like an old mammy. Those are the only kind of black women they like. They like an old mammy, somebody who's out of their sexual prime. Like they love an old black woman. You notice that? The white women, they say, oh, hi, mammy. You have some more of that sweet potato pie? Oh, yeah, baby. You know, old lady cooning it up. They love an old ass sister. They love Manny. Let it be a young, halfway attractive, attractive sister. Uh, an attractive sister? Not even, even halfway attractive. Hell, I'll even say slim. All you got to do is be slim. All you have to do is not be fat. And you're a threat. If you're a young, slim sister or, or in-shape sister, you ain't got to be cute. As long as you are, if you are a slim sister or an in-shape sister who's young around white women, many of them hate your guts. Many of them hate your damn guts. They have vitriol because now you become competition. These white women ain't dumb. They know what mass are like. They knew that during the plantation days. Don't think them white women, they knew massa was slipping out there in the, the Negro quarters. Them white women knew that. The, the only reason the white men were, were with the with the missus is so that he could have white kids. That was the only reason he was with the missus. He couldn't stop laying up with sapphire in the slave quarters. Let's be real. A lot of that black pussy was kryptonite to a lot of those dudes. Not kryptonite enough where they would give up white supremacy, but they, they always had a hankering for some of that, that chocolate ass. White women know that. White women have been knowing that. We talked about that in one of the Hidden Colors movies. That's why white, that's why white women were so abusive to black kids. If you look at the, some of the slave narratives and the documents and the court records, it was white women that were beating the shit out of black children, and they do it now, just like we saw those white women up there in Oregon torturing those black babies and the girls. That dirty, those dirty, disgusting white supremacist women up there in Oregon, it was the older girl who was a teenager that they were torturing the most. Because now she's becoming, she's going into her womanhood now. She's getting shapely. Now she's, she's competition. You understand? And they beating the shit out that baby. And then niggas want to holler at me talking about some damn intersectionality. Fuck out of here, man. 
But the thing is, I was talking about value. The white supremacists, they value dominance. They value practicing white supremacy. They value getting out that bed and doing some type of harm to a black person. If they can't do that, they are ready to die. If they cannot properly practice white supremacy and mistreat black people, they're down to die. Because they value that so much. They don't value little bullshit material items. They don't. They value having the ability to dominate. And when they're told they can't dominate black people the way they want to, well, I'm going to go all out. I'm going to blow up something. I'm going to shoot up something. I'm just going to go all out. That's their mentality. Whereas black people, what do we value? We value nigger trinkets. We value, we don't value what we need to value, which is empowerment. See, we have to start valuing black empowerment, meaning we need to value black people having a global networking system of protection and empowerment. That's something that we should start valuing in large numbers. See, that's something that I value. The average black person values material nigger trinkets. We value shoes, the new sneakers. We value candy paint and rims. We value weaves and bundles. We value nigger trinkets. Those are the things we'll die for. You notice black people die and kill not to protect themselves because we'll sit up and a crowd of black people will watch a race soldier beat up a woman in the damn streets and a crowd of black people are just standing around. But that same crowd of black folks will commit murder <laughs> upon another black person who's, try who's still their shoes. Or they got some shoes you like. We'll kill over some fucking shoes. We'll go to prison forever over some damn shoes. You look at First 48, niggas are getting life sentences over stupid ass bullshit. Shoes, Cars. You stole somebody's car and you're going to jail for life over a damn car because you value that. You value that car. You value those Jordans. You're willing to die or go to jail for life over the things you value instead of going to jail over valuing empowerment. Notice whenever society breaks down, whenever there's a blackout or a natural disaster, what do the white people do? The white people start getting guns. They get their guns and then they start protecting their neighborhoods. When the lights out, when the levees break, they're on boats with guns because they are valuing redominating. When the lights turn on, we got to redominate. When the lights go off and the levees are broken for black folks, what do we do? We go raid the shoe store. That's the first place we go. While they got a handful of guns, we got a boat full of damn Jordans. And this is why we can be dominated because we value bullshit. This is why we'll sit up and allow people to harm us because all we want to do is go back to our nigga shit. We'll let you abuse us. We'll let you beat us up. We'll let you kill our, our children. Just don't harm me. Let me go back to what I value. Just as long as you don't harm me, I'll just go over here in my corner and value my shoes. I can value my weave. I can value my nigga trinkets. Because that's what life is to me. Life is nigga trinkets. You dig? As long as I can get back to my nigga trinkets, I'll let you abuse me. See, we could have shut down a lot of shit a long time ago. We, we could shut that shit down a long time ago, but we don't value that. As a matter of fact, we make excuses for it in exchange for nigga shit. When somebody, you know, in Oklahoma, there have been three black people lynched in Oklahoma within the last month. It was a sister. She got lynched. She got killed. And two brothers, they got killed. 
I think they were buying a gun or whatever. They went to buy a gun from somebody, from what I understand, and it was a group of white supremacists who dismembered their bodies, chopped them up. I mean, it was a vicious, vicious, vicious murder. This happened in Oklahoma a couple of weeks ago. Do you know one of the family members was on Instagram talking about, well, RIP to my cousins who got killed. Now, this wasn't about race now. We shouldn't say it's about race. So you already had the family cooning it up. These brothers got dismembered by a group of damn white supremacists and the coon fucking relatives are already talking about the shit ain't about race. Because they think there's some money coming along down the line and they don't want to mess up their ability to get nigga trinkets. Just like the dude, Stefan Tay and Stefan Clark and all these dudes up there in the Bay. The dude brother get killed. He's cooning it up. He gets killed and the other, hey, Linda Anderson, how are you, beloved? So now this nigga out here cooning it up because he they, they feel a check is coming. More nigga trinkets. And understand this. Back to Oklahoma, the sister who got killed. What's her, her last name is Toombs. I can't think of her first name. The black girl who got killed. She was a young sister. She was pregnant. Unfortunately, looks like she might have been doing some bed wenching. She knew the white woman. And something went down. But she was hanging out with the white woman from what I understand, and the story's all over the place, but from what I understand, this black woman was hanging out with this white woman, and the white woman somehow got her mixed in with these people, and the white woman was an accessory to her murder. Like I said, black women, this is how these white women feel about you. You sitting up here skinning and grinning around these white supremacist females, they will sit up here and plot on your ass and have you murdered. That's how much they don't fuck with you like that, even though they're grinning your face. But it uh, looks like this sister might have been doing some bed wenching, unfortunately. You know, she has a, a, another kid. The kids, I don't know, it looked like, because the, the kid is like real light with gray eyes, and she's like a dark brown girl, so... The baby dad looked like he he could be a white dude or something like that. So the sister looked like she might have been doing what's a Shalaya Tombs. And, and I'm not I don't like to disparage the deceased. I don't like to disparage the deceased, but it, it looked like there was some bedwinching going on. So y'all think you're gonna find a safe space in bedwinching, and it's just not gonna happen. You think you're going to find a, a safe space in Bedwinton. This goes back to black people. We need to clean up shop around us. We got to clean up shop and get on code. What we got to do, we got to start building soldiers again. We got to have a black male soldier class. There's a reason why people are promoting moist or metrosexual behavior among black men. And not even just that, it's just straight out, they're promoting gay behavior among black men. And notice, it's the white supremacist that's always funding something that's promoting gay behavior within black males in black society. I'm going to get on the route in a minute. This is where I'm going. This is where I'm going. But this is something, and this ain't about homophobia, because this is not a, a cut on gay black people. Do I have any gay brothers and sisters here in the room? If you are gay, press one or put the eggplant emoji up. Let me know you're in here. Where are my gay people? There's a reason why the white supremacists are promoting gay culture within black society. They don't help us with nothing else, but all of a sudden they want to put money behind gay awareness in black society. 
you better understand something's up with KD, you ain't gay. <laughs> Who's that? Baked goods? Oh, wait, wait, hold on. Nathaniel Jeter, the Jedi. Okay, are y'all gay or lesbian? Which one are you? Anastasia White. Okay, we got a little stud in here. Shout out to Anastasia the stud. That's the stud name. Nathaniel Jita. So Nathaniel, you you a gay dude, brother? I'm in. We, you, you are family. I, I'm not shitting on you. You are family. You am no. So KD Carney, you a gay brother? Okay. Now KD, where you where you from? Atlanta, brother. Rainstorm. You said your son is gay. Okay. Astro Boy. Okay. All right. Now, I want y'all to put your fantasies in here. Some of these names are. All right. KD Carney. Now, KD. Now, now what city are you in, KD? D Tubman. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're still family. We're, we're still family. You're upstate New York. Okay. So you are a chilly queen. It's a little cold up there. So you got to put some some leggings on because it's cold up there in New York. But you are a brother. Somebody said their name was Astro King. Okay, y'all going too far. But understand this, and I'm talking to my gay brothers and sisters here. These white supremacists propping you up. You, you better be very suspicious of it. Them propping you up. Don't think for a minute they're trying to do that to help you. Do you think they're trying to do anything to help you? Now, some people don't give a shit. They're like, okay, I'm just glad I'm getting some attention. But understand with the white supremacists, there's always an agenda. And I talked about this the other day. There's a stage play that they got coming out that it was a, a white nonprofit organization helped fund this. Now, they got black people in the front. They got like a black writer and director you know, to kind of cover it up. But it's white money behind it. Let's be very clear. The money behind it is white. You don't get on Broadway without some white money, by the way. Or off-Broadway, anywhere near Broadway without some white money. Let's be clear. But there's a play that they got coming out about slavery. The play is about two gay slaves during the Civil War, they strike up a romance. During the Civil War, two gay slaves. One is a runaway and he, he meets, he comes hide out at this other slave's house and they form a fucking romance. The name of the play is called Sugar in Our Wounds. I'm not making this up. Y'all Google that. The play is called Sugar in in our wounds. And this is some shit where not only that's very disrespectful to the legacy of slavery, by the way. That's mad disrespectful. And black folks allowing that type of disrespect is asinine. And the organization, it's a Jewish organization. Jewish white organization that's helping to fund this, which is very interesting because never in a million years will anybody let a stage play go on about a concentration camp in Nazi Germany where there are two Jewish people striking up a gay relationship in a concentration camp. They wouldn't have nothing like that. That would be so disrespectful. They would shut that shit down. But to have a play like that and the narrative they're trying to create is that two lovers were dealing with intersectionality. They were dealing with uh, slavery, racism, and their sexuality as if it's comparative. That's this whole thing where they are trying to pretend that the black experience is comparative to the gay experience. Meaning that White gays have suffered just like black people. That's the narrative that they're trying to create. White gay people are suffering too, just like the black slaves. They are always trying to make that false equivalency narrative 
and it's always disrespectful. You dig? But to, to show something like that or even put something like that together is extremely disrespectful to black society. If you want to talk about a gay relationship and slavery, talk about the slave owners who in many cases were gay, who would rape black men. That's the story if you're going to tell. Let's just tell the truth. But to get a horrific story like that, like slavery, people are deprived of rights, liberty, people did not own their own bodies, but we're going to try to make a romantic story out of that. You understand? So this is how desperate they are to push this agenda. Now, that's an agenda. That's not you giving props to gay society. That's not you showing honor to gay society. That's disrespectful all across the board. That's an agenda. I cannot co-sign an agenda. This, I'm not shitting on gay people. My problem is not with gay people. My problem is the people who put that together, who thought that creating that type of narrative to push an intersectional agenda on the back of such a horrific ordeal that trivializes it. It's like, yeah, yeah, slavery was so bad, it was horrible. But what about those two gay lovers over here, though? Let's talk about them. You're trivializing a, a, a black holocaust. You understand? But these people are pushing an agenda. They're pushing an agenda. And understand, in, in white society, you notice they're not pushing this gay agenda on white men. They're pushing it on black men heavy, but they're not pushing it on white men. As a matter of fact, white men, really going back to the 80s, when they started getting these militia groups popping again, you had a lot of these white Vietnam vets. There was a rallying call in the underground with these white supremacist groups where we need white men. We need white men, masculine men, so we can go and get militia groups, so we can start training in the woods, so we can become survivalists. And you have that today. And we're seeing the fruition of that right now. This is why black folks are getting the fucking shit kicked out of us because these white people and white males, they've been training. They've been training to be soldiers. They've always, they've been planning on racial attacks for the longest. In order to dominate those folks, we're going to have to teach our men how to be soldiers and we're going to have to start promoting femininity within black society. So while we're getting our asses kicked by these white supremacists in combat boots, bulletproof vests, fatigues, I mean, they're ready for war. They got on fatigues they got on combat boots. They got ARs and all types of weaponry. And we got skinny jeans and iPhones. Weak as fuck. We got tongue rings and flip flops. That's what we got. And when we try to talk of, about building soldiers and standing up, in a masculine way to protect our communities. And because you need masculinity to protect yourself. We're told, well, damn it, you need to be intersectional. They got on bulletproof vests and armored hats. We got on rompers. You understand this? I saw a video earlier, 17 year old boy these white supremacist race soldiers beating this kid, punching him in his face, all his friends around with skinny jeans on, sagging with their ass out, talking about, you need to quit. Just look at the dichotomy. Niggas with skinny jeans and they booty out, yelling at these dudes who are in a soldier militaristic mindset. That's by design. And the dominant white society, what they've done, they've created a contingency of Negro minions to help promote 
that message of black femininity. Black men need to be more sensitive. Black men need to be less masculine. And the main hub of that is publications like The Root. The white supremacists, they quietly would elevate these publications, pretending that they are black people, but they're really white owned, like The Root. And we've been going in on The Root real heavy. As a matter of fact, there's a hashtag, The Root Articles, where people are mocking The Root. People have been going in on The Root and their bullshit articles. The Root. And, and we've been making, and, and a lot of people thought I created the hashtag. I did not create the hashtag, but I helped start the movement of people calling the root out because I've been calling the root out for their fuckery for a long time. But people like the root, these people get a lot of money pushed behind them to push these agendas that's going to undermine black society. And people have been calling them out all week. Places like the root. These people work directly with the white supremacists to spread propaganda, to act as attack dogs. They use rhetoric and language that's so anti-straight black male, it's ridiculous. They even have a term for straight black males and women, cisgender, C-I-S gender, cisgender, or cishet, cis, cis heterosexuals. Now, cisgender means a straight black person. Cisgender means, a, a, or not just a straight black person, but a straight person. A cisgender person is somebody who identifies with their born sexuality. And the Shea Butters and all these people, they turn heterosexuality into an epithet. They've turned it into an epithet. So places like The Root, they attack straight black males on a daily basis. And that's just why people are making fun of them right now. Because their whole agenda is to mock and to demonize straight black males. Like straight black males are the enemy. And all their articles, it's always some shit where they're blaming a straight black man for something. And people have been mocking them. And their real articles, they do the same. Like um, Donald Glover, Childish Gambino, he just came out with the video. They're clowning him and they're talking down on him. Talking about, well, how can he be woke and he married a white woman or whatever. But The Root, their whole narrative is about swirling. Every other article is about swirling and finding white zaddy and all this coon bed wench mammy shit. So they're not in a position to talk to anybody about any swirling or anything of that nature. But the root, places like the root, they are absolute poison for black society. They are absolute poison for black society. And they put up these pro-gay anti-straight black male articles on a daily basis because white daddy tells them to do so. I don't mind you do, if you want to, because all of, damn it, all the writers up there at the root are gay. And if you want to be pro-gay, that's fine. Nobody's knocking you for being gay or whatever, but when you are being paid to be anti-straight and anti-black society, and now you're posting up stories not only about um, anti-black society or anti-straight society they're posting up shit that's they posting up these pedophilic love stories about black girls getting raped by older white men and they're framing it in the narrative of a love story now they're just going too far but the thing is places like the root these places they have this anti-black agenda that we cannot ignore. And we're going to have to start calling them out. we got to start cleaning house. we got to, and, and shout out to everybody who's getting on their ass. See, that's what you're supposed to do. Places like that, who's meant to create an agenda with black society, you have to create a mechanism where you can discredit them in large numbers. You dig? And that's, that's a Skip Gates vehicle. Henry Louis Gates, that's his thing. And remember what John Henry Clark said about Skip Gates. He said Skip Gates 
is a professional white ass kisser. You dig? So that gives you the mentality of the people up there at the root. But the thing is, we got to understand that we in this on our own. It's only us. It's only us doing this thing. Ain't no, we ain't got no allies. And also in black society, we got people who have thrown in the towel, people who are going to be team white supremacy. You got Negroes who's going down with the ship. Yeah, the root is 100% white owned. The root is white owned. Let's be clear. Don't let the root fool you. The root is white owned. It's white owned. Don't let nobody fool you. That's why they don't really challenge white supremacy for real. See, you got to watch these Negroes. They'll talk a good game, but the minute white zaddies snap them fingers, they know what to do. They know how to act. They know how to stand in line and get in line. You dig? The root is 100% white owned. It is not black owned. This is why they always have a black anti-male, anti-straight male agenda. But we got to have soldiers out here. We got to start G-checking. That's the problem. We have so much fuckery that goes on in black society. You don't have nobody in a position to G-check. Remember what power is. Power is the ability to reward and punish. That's all power is. Power is the ability to reward and punish. And fuckery goes on in black society because people know, well, who's going to punish me? I ain't going to get punished. I can do whatever in black society. I can just come around and I can twerk and I can molest kids. I can do anything in black society. And ain't nobody going to do nothing. Ain't no punishment mechanism because we don't have any institutions. See, this is why when you get an institution, you... You start getting codes. When you start getting a code, you can start implementing large scale changes. Yeah, but yeah, and I told you, these people at the root and all these other folks, they're getting to the point where they're going to say, and they're saying it, if you don't, if you are a straight black male, which they negatively call a cisgender, if you ain't down to have sex with another man, well, damn it, you're homophobic. You're problematic. If you don't want to have sex with another man, well, damn it, you're being the, you're the white supremacist of the black community. Ain't that what that Moist Niggas article said? That Damon Young, that little goofy nerd, that fuck boy who works over there at the root? This nigga made an article talking about black people are the white supremacists of the black community. That was a real article. People got on his ass about that. Y'all should have been got on this clown's ass. You should, right there leaves no doubt of who they working for to say some shit like that. You dig? But, you know, you, you got to have a mechanism in order to punish and reward. This is why Kanye is out here running around. Like I said earlier, Kanye ain't got nobody G-checking him. You don't have a Dame Dash who's over you really G-checking you. So now Kanye is up there with the, he didn't got with the Kardashians. That nigga Kanye is on a, in his mind, he's on another level. And people are propping him up for that whole slavery was a choice comment. Understand this about Kanye. Don't let him fool you with that slavery was a choice because it was niggas like Kanye that kept us on plantation. See, that slavery was a choice. That's Those are white supremacist talking points. That's that whole, uh, black people are on the Democratic plantation. Y'all choose to be on the plantation. That's that's one of those Ben Shapiro talking points that he done got from Candace Owen. Don't be fooled by that. The reason why we were on the plantation so long and we couldn't get off, because we told niggas like Kanye, we about to run and he started cooning like he coons now. It was that nigga and niggas like him that kept us on the plantation. Because understand, when Kanye's ancestors was on the plantation and a runaway slave was trying to get him to, to run, he was like, look, we're going to run. We're going to run tonight. And Kanye's ancestors was like, how, Kunta? You ain't got the answers, Kunta. 
You ain't got the answers, Kunta. No, no, Kunye. I do have the answers. We're going to run to the North. We're going to look to the North Star. We're going to meet up with Harriet Tubman. But it ain't Ralph, though. It ain't Ralph, though. Just like he was cooning on Sway, he, his ancestors was cooning on the plantation just like that. Because remember, when Sway was trying to tell him, hey, Kanye, stop worrying about all those white designers. They won't give me a seat at the table. Wait, don't, don't worry about that. Why don't you build your own shit? How, Sway? He, Kanye's eyes started bucking. You tell this nigga to get away from white folks? That nigga eyes damn near bucked out of his head. He became a violent plantation buck. With Sway telling him to get off the plantation. Please. Slavery was a choice. And nigga, the choice was yours. Kunye, the choice was yours. You tell a, a coon to go be free, they will act just like Kanye. You dig? And them eyes will just start bucking and fluttering. Man, man, man. But yeah, we gotta we gotta start valuing the right thing. Wait a minute, I froze. So let me look at myself. I kind of froze. Am I freezing here? Okay. Where am I? I can't see myself in the chat room. Hold on. Refresh my page here. Can y'all see me? I can't see. I, I, my thing is kind of frozen. Let me let me look at some things here. Okay, my is my computer really freezing a lot? Hold on, let me let me take some of this shit down because I can't read the chat room, folks. Hold on, y'all bear with me for one second. There we go. All right, let me see if I can. Pull it back up because I can't see the chat. By the way, I hope you guys got your 1804 DVD at 1804movie.com. The Hidden History of Haiti. 1804movie.com. Ladies and gentlemen, 1804movie.com. Let me look in the chat room, see if y'all can still see me. Sometimes the stream is a little jank, jank, but I am here. Doing my thing. Let me look in the room and see if I can see you. All right. Okay, I see you. Are you we good? We good? All right. Can y'all see me? We here? We good? I can't tell if I'm on or not. I'm good? I'm good? Okay, I'm good. All right. Shit, it's kind of freezing up over here for some reason. I don't know why. Man. But, um, yeah, yo, I hope y'all got your 1804 DVDs. I hope you got them. I hope you got your 1804 DVDs and, and your Hidden Colors DVDs at HiddenColorsFilm.com. HiddenColorsFilm.com. Ladies and gentlemen, HiddenColorsFilm.com. You dig? But um, we got to be in a position, family, where we're going to have to start valuing empowerment. Empowerment is going to have to be a life or death situation. Just being Negroes sitting around enjoying our Negro trinkets, that's going to get you killed. Black people think that you're going to just opt out and just be happy with your Negro trinkets. And it's not going to be like that. We think we can just go sit in a corner, play with our nigger trinkets, and nobody's going to bother us. You know, the, the nigger trinket days are done. You know, these people are coming hard, and they're emboldened, and they're empowered, and the first thing we got to do, we have to start not only checking them, but checking the Negroes who enabled them. We got to start checking the Negroes and the people who enable them. 
You dig? Because like I said, I was on Twitter earlier and I was talking about certain things. And, and, and like I said earlier, this white supremacist, I was talking about um, the people of color thing. And this white supremacist was like, well, Tariq, you, what do you say? He said, you seem like you don't like white people or something. It's saying that people of color don't help black people. I mean, this is a white guy, by the way. Man, Tariq, you're saying that people of color don't help and you're being divisive. You just lost me as a potential ally. <laughs> Excuse me. He said, you lost me as a potential ally. And I retweeted that, by the way. And him saying that just shows he's so used to black people looking towards him and other white people for validation. He thought that his validation to me would be some form of currency. See, this is how the white supremacists, they know they're Negroes. They know they're Negroes. They know what their Negroes like. They know. And they know that Negroes value even more than nigger trinkets. Let's be, let's be very clear. The thing that black folks value more than nigger trinkets is white approval. And that's a dichotomy that keeps shooting black folks in the ass. But how are you going to empower yourself away from the people who are disempowering you and you value the people disempowering you more than you value your empowerment? This is why we keep running into the same circles. We got to take the white zaddy cape off. A lot of black folks don't want to take that cape off. You got to be very honest. There's something about black folks who think, well, what happens is that black people, you become the pets of white supremacy. You become a pet. And with a pet, a dog, no matter how much you kick a dog, they're going to still come to master. Like, why are you kicking me, master? I'm a good dog. You have a, a pet-master relationship. And that's the problem. And the dude, the way he said it, he said it, he was dead ass serious. Like, I need you as a damn ally. I don't need you as no goddamn ally. I don't need any ally because understand this, black folks. If people were going to be your ally for real, they would have done something already. If people were going to be your ally, they would have done something already. You understand? Ain't nobody going to be. Ain't, you ain't got no allies, black folks. Let's, let's just, just be clear. This, And I've heard that talk before. Like, well, look, Tariq, if the people that you want to be your allies, you're alienating them. Get the fuck out of here. If you were going to do something, you would have done it already. It don't take 400 years to get off your ass to stop injustice. It goes on because you allow it to happen. You understand? You ain't got no allies. Don't You're not going to dangle that in my face. I don't need you as an ally. Because you're not an ally in the first place. So I don't need you to be fake around. See, black folks, we got to get this thing where we're comfortable with white supremacists being fake around us because you go to your job and everybody's fake. And, hey, Bob. Hey, Queen. Hi. How are you? We do that fake bullshit all the time. You're cool with that fake relationship, as Neely Fuller said, the tacky relationship. It's tacky. We love a fake relationship. And the minute you, you, you do something the white supremacists don't like, well, they'll... They'll snatch everything back from you. Look at what they're doing to Cosby. You notice how they make a big deal about all these schools. They go out of their way to talk about they're taking Cosby's honorary degrees back. Yeah, Cosby got a degree here. We're taking his degrees back. We're, 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 we're taking the, the doctoring back. We're taking all of his credentials back. They go out of their way to show you they're taking shit away from Bill Cosby. They don't take shit back from Woody Allen or Harvey Weinstein or Roman Polanski, they ain't taking shit back from them. They, they, they did that whole, we're taking him off the Oscar membership board or whatever, along with Cosby. 
And the only reason they threw Roman Polanski in there so it wouldn't look like the racist bullshit it was. But they go out of their way to talk about what they're taking back. Because they didn't really mean to give it to you anyway. You dig? One thing they didn't give back is the damn money, though. I noticed that. that none of them are saying, hey, we're going to give all these millions back that Cosby donated. Where's that money? All these schools, all you you giving up your, your, you're taking your doctorates back and all that. Where's all that money Cosby gave your ass? Why are you taking all that rapey money? If you took the rapey money, you ain't no better. Y'all ain't shit. If he's rapey and you took his money, you ain't shit. Every last one of you who took the rapey money, y'all ain't shit. If you were so disturbed, you get that money back. You dig? Yeah, he gave millions of dollars. Get that back. Get that money back since he's so bad and he's so rapey. You dig? But understand, black folks, you're in a position, you got to get in a position where you can reward and punish, reward and punish. So you got to value something. You got to value your life and your freedom. And we've been taught globally to not value that globally, not just here, because look, even over in Africa, you got minority groups of white people who believe in white supremacy, running whole African countries. You go over there to Namibia, you got a small group of Germans running shit. A bunch of broke black folks standing around. You should have ran them off decades ago. The only people who wised up were Zimbabwe. The people in Zimbabwe, they, were, they wised up. They got on the right track. You dig? South Africa, y'all should have been got them out. All them white supremacists, you should have got them out. All these white supremacists on a global code, that's the problem. That's the advantage they have. They are on a code, and black folks are still scattered and confused and non-coded up. We do not have no code. That's why we got to start viewing ourselves as the same. And that goes for a lot of other groups. Now, black folks, for the most part, we look at the world as an African family, but it has to be reciprocal because, again, we got a lot of people who are from other African countries who believe that they're something else. We're the Akatas and they're something else. There was a, y'all hear the story about a Nigerian black woman. She came over here with her children and the white supremacists had her thrown off a plane because of her body odor. They said, well, her, her body odor was so strong, they had to throw her off the plane. They humiliated that woman. They straight humiliated that woman. Now, look, I've been to planes over to Middle Eastern countries with a bunch of Arab people, and they could, them burkers was smelling real tangy, all right? There was some tangy-smelling, musty burkers on there, and wasn't nobody getting thrown off no damn plane. You dig? Say she should have showered. Oh, Lord. Yeah, they weren't throwing them tangy-ass burkas off the plane. Yeah, I was going somewhere over there in the Middle East, and man, nigga, I was in the window. I had to hold my goddamn nose. But I get it. That's just part of the culture. Some people, they use deodorant. Some people don't. You know, I don't, I don't disrespect the culture. It's a cultural thing. You did And also, there's some people, you know, who, who can't really afford deodorant like that. You know, they, they need every little dime they can get. You did? She had a pain see the man refused to move. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, you, you get your nigga wake-up call. You know, all Africans are treated the same way globally. 
All of us are treated the same way globally. We got that's why we got to reach out globally. We got to be on the same page globally. What's up, Mister? What's up, Michael? Michael Gardner. What's up? But you can get deodorant from the dollar store. Well, when they get over here, they can go to the damn dollar store. When they get over here, they ain't got no dollar stores. Nigga, dollar over there in certain parts of the country, shit, nigga, dollar, you can feed a motherfucker for two days with a dollar. How can they afford a plane ticket? Well, I don't know who got the tickets for them. I don't know. That she was a queen? And that, that, that don't really mean That don't mean nothing. She was a queen. Was her name queen or was she an actual queen? She could have been the queen of a village, but that don't mean anything. The queenhood and the kinghood over there means nothing. It has no political clout. Don't, don't be fooled by somebody in an African village being called a queen. It has no political power anywhere. That's why she's flying coach. They got the queen and coach. You did? You know, that's laughable to the white supremacists, a queen and a king. Bullshit. They're like, we the kings and queens, we're the white supremacists. We got, we got to understand that. We got to get off that that title, these titles of king and queen. That's why I don't like to use black kings and queens. Look, we are prisoners of war. We need to act like it. That she was in business class? Well, that ain't queen class, God damn it. See, we're prisoners of war. We got to start acting like prisoners of war. Let's stop. We got to stop lying to ourselves. We got to stop lying to ourselves. Nigga, they, yeah, they ain't threw off the plane. Look, now, forget the Middle East. I've been to parts of Europe. There's parts of Europe, motherfuckers, as musty as hell. Shit, you go to parts, you go to Norway, motherfuckers don't be using deodorant like that. I know when I went to, um, I had a layover in Ireland. You had some little musty leprechaun smelling motherfuckers over there too. Hey, that that must it it, it kind of goes from country to country. France, I've been to France. You got a musty motherfucker with a gang of perfume over. That's what they do in France. They cover the funk up with perfume and be musty as hell. They don't be kicking them off the plane. You did? I, I was all over France. I was on a train in France. You got them little musty ass ratatouille smelling niggas over there. You know, the white dudes be over there musty as hell in France. It be musty than a motherfucker. So it ain't just black folks. It ain't just black people in black countries. Let's be clear. Man. Yeah, and they, what they do, they cover it up with, with perfume. Like when you go, there's a beautiful, beautiful palace over there, the Palace of Versailles. And the Versailles Palace is huge, huge, huge. It's big, luxurious palace that um, I think Louis the Eighteenth or Eighth, one of the one of the Henry Lu one of the, the Louises lived in the the kings. And I think Marie Antoinette lived in there. I think. It's a huge balling ass palace, balling. And when you go in there, you could smell must the in the curtains, because what they would do, they would they would, you could smell must and perfume. Because they would bathe every blue moon or whatever, and they would just they didn't bathe like that. They 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 didn't like bathing, so they would just put on a gang of perfume. So you you can smell old must in the curtains over there. They got those old century old curtains over there. You can smell the must in the curtains. Yeah, they bathed once a month and they were so nasty. King Louis, this motherfucker put on us. He was taking off his sock and his toe fell off. He was so dirty and funky. His, his toe fell off because he was so unclean. It would keep the, the socks on and the shoes on. It was a funky as hell. Yeah, man. 
Yeah, you heard that story about his toe falling off? Yeah, yeah. Read the book Dirt? Yeah. Yeah, man, he was so nasty, he didn't bathe. And, you know, you keep your socks and shoes on and wouldn't take them off. And you know, you, 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 I think he had, he had gangrene. Some shit he got where his t he, t when he finally took his sock off, his toe fell off. He's just nasty as shit. This was the king. You understand? Yeah, so they wouldn't, they would bathe very rarely. They would bathe once a month and just perfume themselves every damn day. And they just got used to that funk. It was a a cologne funk. You yeah. But that's a good you you if you ever go to France, go to the Versailles Palace. It's, it's a badass palace. This shit is huge, huge palace. You dig? Yeah, I had a good time when I was over in France. Yeah, that's when the Moors came up and then um, cleaned up a lot of stuff up there. The Moors came up and, and really cleaned up shop. You dig? Did you see the gardens? Yeah, man. I, I was all out there. I, it was beautiful out there. And um, the Louvre Museum, the, the Louvre, they got all our African artifacts in there. You go in the Louvre, you go downstairs in the Louvre Museum, and they got all those black Egyptian statues down there. What's up, Bridgeport, Connecticut? Shout out to Bridgeport. Shout out to Bridgeport. And, and when I was in France, I did not like the food at all. I really didn't like the food. Think of the food. I didn't like the French food, man. That food was not good to me. You know, when I went up there, oh, man, they were these, these combinations. I told you the combinations were real weird. You, they'd give you like a waffle and then put a bunch of chocolate pudding on it. And even when I saw McDonald's, the McDonald's, you know, you go to other countries, the McDonald's don't taste the same. I don't like European food at all. And I'm going to Europe next month. When I go to the UK, I stay in the Caribbean spots. That's what I do. When I go to, to the UK, I hit up, shout out to Eric, they take me to all the Caribbean spots. The Caribbean spots are banging. That's where you go. All my, my black folks, if you go to the UK, now France, I don't know where to go. France, you kind of got to find, you know, get in where you fit in. But if you're in the UK, if you're in England somewhere, you find you a good Caribbean cat, a couple of Caribbean folks, and you go to them. They got great Caribbean spots out there. But like when I'm just eating at the hotel, I can, I can do fish and chips and porridge. That's all I can do. All that other shit, I can't do it. You got to go to the Latin quarters when you go to France. Okay. I'm trying to win a schnitzel. So there has to be an African restaurant. And yeah, it might be. There might be an African restaurant. Yep, in Brixton. Yep, over there in Brixton. I love the UK's food over there. The, the Caribbean food. Yeah, I got to get to Cuba. I've been wanting to get to Cuba. I got to get down there to Cuba. So they don't have sensitive taste buds like us. Real talk. Real talk. And that's why, you know, they had to go and leave Europe to go to places to find spices. You know, that's that's been the white supremacist's life mission to find some seasoning. <laughs> I mean, they've been trekking around the world to learn how to season some shit. They can't season for nothing. You did? Man, well, y'all can listen to the playback. There's a lot of folks up in here. Y'all, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Haven't been on this channel in a minute, but subscribe to the channel. Australia's cool. I, I just didn't, I didn't like the energy in Australia too much, but Australia's cool. They got some good eating spots there, though, because, you know, it's close to Asia, so you got some real good spots out there. 
You know, I need to go to New Guinea. I need to go to New Guinea. New Guinea is right next to Australia. I need to go there. And um, I need to go to Melanesia where all those, you got all those little islands of jet black people over there. So I need to go there. You know, they they got that melanated spirit. There's um there's this one kickboxer from New Guinea who fights over there in that area. I forget his name is the Black Something. And he be, he does that Mai Tai and Muay Thai. And Muay Thai, that's no joke, because that shit like it resembles capoeira. And he be kicking the shit out of people. New Zealand, yeah, I gotta get to New Zealand too. Yeah, I gotta get over there to New Zealand. Yeah, the vibe in Australia was real weird, man. I, I, the vibe was real weird for me. It's Mai Tai, yeah. Yeah, they, they do that over there in Thailand and all that. That Mai Tai, it, it's, it's very similar to Capoeira. Yeah. Yeah, it is a lot of black men co-signing the fuckery. That I was talking about earlier. That is a problem. There are a lot of black men co-signing the fucker. That's why I was getting on brothers. I was getting on brothers' cases. We got to stop being the garbage men, taking in trash from everybody. We're supposed to be the ones protecting the neighborhood and the community from trash. But the thing is, on the same token, we got to stop having these bed winches and bed bucks undermine us because that's the problem when black folks, black men, do want to protect the community. We have white daddy and his paid bedwinches and bedbucks trying to undermine us. You understand? That's why we got to get some shit cleaned up within black society. We got to get shit cleaned up within black society, man. I gotta come to New York. I haven't been to New York in a long time. I might be going to Vegas for Memorial Day. What Memorial Day is at the end of this month, right? Yeah, the, the coons have run amok, man. We we got a coon. The the coons have just run amok. That's why I do want to still do the the coon train awards, but Man, we, there's so many categories. We got to come up with whole new categories for all the cooning that's happening out here now. We got to have whole different categories, whole new ones. But again, we got to start understanding what power is, the ability to punish and reward. And you use that, you punish and reward with resources. We got to start thinking about things mathematically and not just in the realm of catchphrases because we get into catchphrasism. <clears throat> we start just getting together and just spewing a bunch of catchphrases. Man, we need to get together. All right, get together and do what? Man, we got to get together and do better. All right, get together, do better, and do what? Man, we just have to stop the violence. Okay, after we stop the violence, what are we going to do? Man, we just got to love each other. Okay, after we get together, stop the violence, love each other, what do we do? Man, we just got to get real with it. Uh, okay. Now we're just throwing out different catchphrases without going into logistics. That's the problem. We get into this catchphrasism and do not go into logistics. And then what we start doing, niggas start deflecting into other issues. Deliberately. The niggas who were sent in by the white supremacists, we get around and talk about what we're going to do to empower ourselves. Then all of a sudden, well, what about all of these homophobic people in the black community? Why? What do you mean? People are homophobic. They don't like me because I love sucking a dick. I right, well, suck a dick, man, dude. Ain't nobody tripping on you. But what about the misogynoir? Dude, if you want to suck a dick, that's good. What are we going to do about this? I feel bad about y'all mad at me because I like talking to Nick. I mean, then we, it's a, it's a big time-wasting mechanism. It becomes a whole time-wasting mechanism. Nobody, look, nigga, if you want to suck a dick, fine. Now, what, what you, when you get the dick out your hand, what are you going to do to help me get this white supremacist off our back? 
That's my message to you. To the, you know, the gay black community. You can suck dick till you throw up. After you get through with them dicks, what are you going to do to help us get these white supremacists? If you want to suck away, my dude, get it in. But when you're done, are you willing to help us get at these white supremacists? Are you willing to strap up your flip-flops and put your spaghetti straps on and help me fight this motherfucker? That's all I want to know. That's all I want to know. I don't care what you do with whoever. Are you going to help me fight this motherfucker over here? All the ladies, I'm not hating on you. If you're a stud, I'm not hating on you. But when we're fighting these white supremacists, I'm going to need you to take your dildo off and swing that motherfucker and start hitting these white supremacists with them. You dig? Don't sit up here talking about your feelings and misogynoir and all this stuff because when it comes to fighting the white supremacists, whose side you going to be on? Because a lot of times y'all be up here caping for zaddy. That's what I want to know. I want to know who's going to be up here caping for Zaddy because see, the thing is, Zaddy is the one who's giving you everything. Zaddy's elevating you to certain positions, so a lot of loyalty is over there with Zaddy, especially from the gay black community. They elevate the gay black community, so the black community, who the, the gay black community is very loyal to the white supremacists. This is why many people in the gay black community keep talking that intersectionality bullshit. Because you're doing that for Zaddy. You're caping for Zaddy. You dig? We gotta stop the bullshit. What's up, Goddess Sekmet? What's up, Nikki? It's a lot of y'all in the room. Boy, it's a lot of y'all in here. I had it was I was going arguing with a gay black dude on Twitter earlier because he was talking about that play, and I was talking about how disrespectful he was. The play was. And he started talking this intersectional shit, and he started just making up history. He was like, yeah, um, we could talk about um, homosexuality and slavery because there was white gays who were getting murdered and harmed just like black slaves. I'm like, nigga, show some proof of that. That's bullshit. White gay people weren't getting murdered like that during slavery. Then he just started talking in circles. And again, that's another thing. Niggas are so desperate to cape for Zaddy, they'll just start making up anything in a desperate attempt to cape for Daddy. Man. Yeah, Sekhmet, the goddess of war. Yes, indeed. Sekhmet is the goddess of war. What y'all want? Do y'all know the, some of y'all take on the Egyptian names? Y'all better know what they mean. Y'all better know what these names mean. Y'all need to know everything about these names. Because understand, speaking of Sekhmet, Sekhmet is represented as the lion. Let's, let's go deep. Speaking of Sekhmet, let's go deep with that. Sekhmet is represented as the lion, the god of war. Got it? Let's go deep. You know, let me break your name down. Sekhmet is the god of war, goddess of war. It's represented as the lion. The lion, the sphinx is Sekhmet, exactly. The lioness. The war, war. That's African shit right there. Let me get deep. Let me get deep on y'all since we're talking about the name segment. The lioness. The war. The lion in war. Lion in war. Now, Leo is based on that. The, the, astro the astrological sign Leo is based on segment. Got it? Leo is a lion. In astrology, in Egyptian astrology, in African astrology, Sekhmet and Leo, it falls at the time that we call August. Where are my Leos? Where are my Leos? Let's get deep. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get Zoe Williams deep on y'all for a minute. Where are my Leos? Where are your 
When is your birthday? I know a lot of Leos have their birthdays in August. You're a Leo. When is your birthday, Miss Baxter? August August 1st, Sweet James Jones. August what? When is your birthday? August what? All my Leo. August 12th, August 14th, August 21st. Now, as you know, the, and we talked about this in Hidden Colors, because August is the month of war in African astrology. This is why you have so many successful revolutions with African people in August, the month of Leo, the month of Sekhmet. There's a medical, metaphysical reason. The Haitian Revolution was successful in August, started in August. The Jamaican Revolution started in August. Jamaica got their independence in August. You understand? So August and the, the, that war, we, we get that war spirit back. You understand? We get that war spirit back. This is why a lot of rebellions were timed around that. Because they knew, astrologically and spiritually, the earth gives us that war spirit. You understand? Your, your birthday is August 12th. That's what's up. You got a, a lot of badasses who are Leos. Leos are great leaders. And also, again, August is uprising time. The watch riot was in August. You understand there's a lot of significant wartime uprisings with black people that happens in August. And that goes to astrology. Yeah, I talked about Lil Tay and all those people earlier. I broke that down. The Lion of Judah, yes, indeed. Yep, Haley Selassie. He was a Leo. That that energy. And remember, Ethiopian, they were whooping the shit out of the Italians. Ferguson happened in August, exactly. A lot of stuff happened in August. Ferguson, Watts Riot, Haitian Revolution, Jamaican Independence. A lot of that stuff happens in um in August. Marcus Garvey was a Leo. Some of the great, most influential leaders came out of the month of August. They had that Sekhmet energy. Yes, indeed, Marcus Garvey was a Leo. It was that Sekhmet energy. This is why we got to know our history and our astrology and all of our stuff. Your daughter's a Leo, yes. King Menelik, born August 17th. King Menelik, he was the one who got the medallions up out of there. You understand? King Menelik of Ethiopia, this brother whooped the shit out of Italy. They came up in there and they beat the shit out of them. No, almost come here, baby. Almost come here. I got my queen in here. Come say hello, Happy Mother's Day to everybody, sweetie. Mm -hmm. A boy sleep. Come on, here, say everybody. <laughs> they can't see you. Mm -hmm. Thanks for my baby powder. You change diapers. What's up? Yeah. What's up, baby? What's going on with you? Mm -hmm. This is what you need to do. What's this? Well, what the fuck is this? Eat the damn. What the hell? You know, you know, this is what I need to do. Hold on. Look at this shit. Look at this shit. What, the fuck? what is this moist shit right here? The niggas just be doing anything on the ground. But what is this? <laughs> okay. The hell? Man, man, man. That's funny. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day. Everybody say, what's up, Mama Pina? And happy birthday, Mama Pina. Man. How the boys doing? They all sleep? They good? 
Mateo's not. Where is he? This screw? week. He's <laughs> mine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, I ain't about to do no boy shit like that. If I do some shit like that, you get a divorce. I'm gonna be a, on that fuck nigga shit. That's not okay. That's looks moist because he's running to a peach right <laughs> So it won't be okay. moist if I do it to you? Nah, it's oh, not. It's not moist. Please. <laughs> if I do that shit, you know, call TMZ. No. <laughs> Lord. I ain't doing that shit. Niggas be doing the most for the gram. Yeah. He didn't want to go to sleep, go to bed. He's mm-hmm. fighting. He's tired as hell. <laughs> Man. He's supposed to be doing the same shit. Yeah, it's funny when they do it. I ain't, She's telling me I should do that. Nah, I ain't about to do that shit. It's my favorite phrase is the boy sleep. Yeah, I always ask that. Yeah. Yeah, I always ask that. How I am. Happy Mother's Day to <laughs> the queen. <laughs> she, she what? What's your name? I said, Mama, hell yeah, she damn freaky. I don't understand the shit she was trying to get me to do. <laughs> it's not it's not moist what he's doing, that's normal. No. Okay. Yeah. Man, man, man. He said box. <laughs> what is it? What is it? He, he acts like he don't need that box. <laughs> <laughs> don't get out of my goddamn business. Man, Coochie Mary. <laughs> Eat the box one time. All right, y'all get out of their bedroom <laughs> business. I ain't about to talk about eating box and we a Christian family. <laughs> He's okay, cool. able. Mm-hmm. Now. You talking about this? Yeah, I talked about that. Oh, man. It's not moist to please your woman. So what you so be who doing? Who said that? Who said that? Hold on, let me see. Let me, let me say that's. Glam Bell TV. All right, Glam Bell. You said it's not moist. No, you're saying it's moist because they no, he put was, it on Instagram. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. It's not moist to please your woman. It's not. But what if your woman, like, putting her finger in your ass? Would you let her do do that? Like, you know. <laughs> would you let her do put her finger in your ass? No, would you put your finger? Like, a dude says, look, I get turned on if you put your finger in my ass. <laughs> would you do it? Would you get the nigga... Would you hitchhike in that nigga's hole? <laughs> That's not the same thing. Oh, no booty glass. Some people we want some extra shit. <laughs> Man. Like, ladies, have niggas asked y'all to do some real weird shit before? E. coli contamination. Somebody died. <laughs> <laughs> oh. What the hell is that? I'm about to go. I'm about to admit. Where you going? Out of here. What is it? What is it? Oh, yeah, today. Is it Side Nigga Sunday? What is it? <laughs> that was a Side Nigga buzz right there. <laughs> Please. Gabriel Union. Union. Oh, Gabriel Union ate D. Wayne's ass. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah, I had a, uh, one of my exes want me to pee on her. I told you about that, remember? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had one of my ex chicks want me to pee on her. I'm like, okay. Hey, look how this, this relationship is really taking a turn. You, I'm like, okay, I don't want to really pee on you. Oh, my God, okay. A little real random. Oh, my God. I thought you were a good, clean bitch. Oh, damn, I'm going to make a pee on you. I'm like, damn. Maybe she just want to shower. I, I don't know how I'm gonna look at you at the breakfast table. I'm like, don't put the, your pissy hands on my pancakes. I'm like, yeah, just want to be on her. Like, you said gonna, you refused. Yeah, I did. I'm not trying to pee on you. No, I'm good. <laughs> he wasn't trying. To, he wasn't trying to please her. <laughs> <laughs> you want to do what someone else will do? Well, let this. She. I hope she's with a pissy nigga right now because I couldn't do it. I'm not trying to piss on you like that. I'm good. Mm-hmm. Man. Man. Yeah, it's called the rain Yeah, yeah. Look at the peanuts nails. Peanut got those nails done the other day. She went to a mother. Dude, you got those done before you went to the spa, right? 
Look at those hands. Sexy as hell. Nice color. Yeah, got the toes looking on flip. I'm going to put my toes on the, the Well, I know your toes. People thought Get her. my toes People up. said her feet look great. Her feet are not any dirty than a mother on the bottom. They look like you've been working on a farm. They're not <laughs> dirty until now. No, but they're not big. Did you say I have some antelope feet? Yeah, she got some little narrow ass kangaroo feet. No. You <laughs> probably look big because they're skinny. Man, I ain't about to lick her toes on that. If I lick her toes, y'all sitting that shit to Fox News. <laughs> <laughs> like, Dariq Nasheed is into a fetish. He has a fetish cult, a sexual fetish. Yeah. Hell yeah, Peanut can't walk around this mom with those raggedy ass toes. That ain't gonna look good. She, sometimes when I go out of, out of town or somewhere and I come back and she. Oh, she'd be a little raggedy. She'd be slipping. I'm like, okay, really? You don't even be wanting me to go somewhere else, and you, want, you don't want to leave the kids to jail. Yeah, but no, you'd be going in there dip all day. <laughs> <laughs> like, Eesh. Um, I'm in the streets. Yeah. What was that? What was that? Oh, something about the trail. Um, Who the heck? How do you get tips so good? Oh, 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 I, I can't read all that shit while I'm going to jail. Don't sniff her feet on cam. Oh. Man. So everybody's saying happy Mother's Day. What'd y'all do for your mothers today? What'd y'all do? What did y'all do? Yeah, we got a lot of folks in here. We, we're in here heavy. Go get Mateo. No, Mateo, we got to let his ass go to sleep. <laughs> Mateo be waking up in the middle of the night, waking up early. Yeah, Mattel. He wake up at seven in the morning. We have to tiptoe because he's the light sleeper like me. So when Pina takes the other boys to school, she has to tiptoe out the room because they wake the bug up. Yeah. So why did the root call me Cisco? Because they're a bunch of moist fuck boys over there. He said, "Yo, you got your mom a rose tree for the garden. That's what's up. Yeah, potatoes real cute." Oh, yeah. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. Yes. Yes. And my mother, I sent my mother to Detroit to be with my aunt. My aunt is kind of almost under the weather. So my mom is out there chilling with her. You know? But I cannot wait to get to the UK. We're going to have a good lecture out there, me and um, Dr. Joy DeGruy and all that. Say, Peanut looks like Tamia. No, don't Peanut looks like El Varner. Yeah, she looks more like El Varner. Me El Varner or Ken? No, please. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. You, you need to be out there um, on Father's Day. What is Father's Day? It's the day of the lecture. Oh, the Father's Day is, yeah, I'm going to be out there on the 17th on Father's Day. So I got to make sure I get my hair cut before I go so they don't fuck me up. Your Dr. Joy DeGruy is the truth. Yeah, I got, yeah, Dr. Joy DeGruy, she's she's the real deal. I probably, I want to see if I can probably get her for Hidden Colors 5. <clears throat> What's up, Free Soul? You said I got an old Meg head? <laughs> Where's your picture, nigga? You better have your picture covered up. I got an old neck head, nigga. My head resembles a keloid on your mom's titty, nigga. That's what my head looks like. Peanut looks 25. Oh, Peanut ain't no 25. Peanut, oh, he's exactly right. 25. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Dr. Jordy Grew, she's the truth. I love that sister. I love her. Yeah, it's fine. Mm -hmm. Yo, she's mm -hmm. What a sitting. <laughs> what a sitting, hilarious. You went to um, the National Museum of African American History. Yeah, I've been there. It was cool. Take Peanut to Cuba. Hidden Colors 5 should be around non-white supremacist allies. Yeah, yeah. We I'm going to talk about that whole people of color thing. You dig? 
I'm gonna talk about that whole people of color thing. What's up, Afro Vegeta? Is Mama Peanut on Insta? Yeah. I ain't gonna give it out though. So I'm gonna give it out because some niggas y'all be on some extra shit. I ain't gonna give it out. Sometimes y'all be harassing. Let me have niggas harassing my wife on damn Instagram. What kind of sucker shit is that? And shout out to Aki. Aki, um, her Twitter got deleted. They 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 took Aki's Twitter down. She said something about Kanye, and they just they banned her on Twitter. So hopefully, Aki can make another page on Twitter. Or something. Let us know what your page is, Aki, and we'll um, promote it. But that's real fucked up. Peace me. It's to real on Instagram. Uh, you know I ain't about to give you my daughter's Instagram. And I think she has a couple of them. My daughter be trying to hide shit from me. Yeah, so I think she has a, a couple of Instagram pages. You love the smell of pretty girls' feet in your face after they wear flats all day. Turns you on. Okay, nigga. <laughs> all right. Take that shit on somewhere. You sound like a a freaky white dude <laughs> with a Negro fetish. <laughs> you like the smell of women after they done did some farming. <laughs> Sweet daughter, please. So you got banned for talking about Kanye on Twitter. That's interesting. People are getting banned for talking about Kanye. So you can barely hear me. All right, am I loud? I'm, I am talking a little low, but I can talk a little louder. You dig? Somebody, what's your, what was that, Jay Smooth? I almost thought it was Jay Slim. Somebody in here named Jay Smooth. I almost thought that was Jay Slim, the poet. I was about to shout out Jay Slim. And Jay Slim might be listening. Shout out to Jay Slim. I, Jay Slim was on the Instagram live. I was doing a live Instagram. And y'all follow me, Tariq Elite, on Instagram. Um, Jay Slim was, um, I chopped it up with him. He's doing good. He got married recently. I think he's he's still living in Atlanta. So Jay Slim is cool. Um, I, I told him to come out with another book of poems. He was kind of evasive with the questions because I was asking him, like, because I, I, I asked him, what kind of work does this motherfucker do? I'm like, Jay Slim, are you working? <laughs> I'm curious about that. I'm like, what, does this nigga have a job writing them damn poems? Yeah, Jay Slim, he's doing his thing. But yeah, I, I said, Jay, are you working? Yeah, man, I'm, I'm out here just getting this money. I, I, like, what kind of work you doing? Man, you know, I travel and I do this. He was real evasive. I'm like... What the fuck does Jay Slim do for a living? He's like Tommy from um, Martin. Like, look, nigga, do you have a job? I want to know what he does for a living. When people are, you know, kind of quirky, like with them poems, like what kind of job does this nigga have? Uh, he might have gotten fired or some shit. I can see, you know, they he would bring his little poems to work and somebody then pulled his poem and took it down to human resources. They had a talking to that nigga like, um, hey, uh, what was his name, Jamel or something? Hi, Jamel. Um, have a seat, Jamel. You know how the white people are when they about to reprimand you. Hi, Jamel. How are you? Um, yeah, we, we wanted you to come down to Human Resources. We wanted to talk to you. Um, there are some people at the office that's a little uncomfortable with some things going on over there in your cubicle. Like, what, what, what are you talking about? I don't know. What do I, what I do? Well... One of your co-workers came across um, a poem. Um, you know, I, we're all about artistic expression, but what we read was a little disturbing, Jamel. It, then they get their glasses. Well, for, for example, hold on. What I have is... Um, <laughs> they get, they get the, when the white people get their glasses, now nah, it's really about to get heavy. Now hold hold on, Jamel. This is this is what I, I saw. Um, um, sexual assassination. Um, that's not really something that's conducive to the uh, to a constructive work environment, Jamel. 
Well, it was just a poem about, um, you know, my love and, you know, um, erotic sex. I understand that, Jamel, but let's, let, let me read a, a passage from you. For, okay. As I creep into the window fast, I put my tongue all up that ass. That's something <laughs> that we can't really tolerate. <laughs> So I'm gonna I'm gonna have to write you up, Jamel. <laughs> so so I, what kind of work does I gotta? What kind of job does this nigga have? <laughs> Jay Slim and the poems, man. <laughs> oh no. Man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 titties up. Damn. <laughs> she keeps admitting for. Hilarious. That's funny. That's a beast. Man. So Man, you yeah, Mattel be biting peanuts titties and shit. Get the bead in the bed. Ow! I'm like, what the hell? It'd be scaring me. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> How do you stop? Mattel be like, Booby is mine. Booby, yeah, I mean, be yelling, asking for booby. Booby, mine, boobies. I'm his like, favorite, no, I'm like, no. His favorite word is boobies. Man, man, man. Yeah, that's the worst feeling ever, Adina. Yeah. You just got back from the Bahamas. They're letting Chinese finesse them out of the oh, what man. Is Why does it say ten dollars? That's what they're giving. They're donating. Shout out to Mr. J Dub. Shout out to the Melanoid Ministry donations. People are donating. Much respect to y'all. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to hit that. You say the 10000 how can you flip it? Oh, man, there's a lot of stuff you can do. Uh, what, what do you like to do? Like, for a little while, we'll show you how to flip it now. What do you like to do, brother? Ike Taylor, what, what kind of, what, what do you do? What's some of your hobbies, for example? What do you like to do? In your spare time, what are your hobbies besides smoking weed and drinking and all that shit? And also, how'd you get 10000 Did you come up on real estate? Not real estate, but income tax? Did you finesse an old white lady in Jamaica? What, what'd you do? You flip bitcoins? What'd you do? The Daiquiri Trap opening in Fort Lauderdale, first black owned. Hey, that's what's up. The Daiquiri Trap. I like that name. You code and you read. Okay. Okay. So let me see for 10 grand, because you need to start some kind of business with that. Don't think of it as just flipping. What you need to do is invest that. You need to, you can start a lot of shit with $10,000. Like, you know, Master P started a multi million dollar record label, you know, no limit with $10,000. He got $10,000 from his granddad, something like that. So there's a lot of stuff you can do just. Trying to find out what kind of business you can invest in that you can make money with, not where you just kind of flip that one time. Think of it as an investment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, boots on the Who said three? So who was that? What? Someone said their baby is about to be three and they're still nursing. Damn. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's okay. So, yeah, very nice. Real estate investment, carpet cleaning business, yeah. Mobile barber shop. It just depends on what you do. You so say you do coding. It's a, kind of a lot of folks do that, which is cool. Um, yeah, he started. He used that to start a record shop, but that was the catalyst for No Limit. That's how he started that record label, and he got relationships with all of the the record labels and the record stores, and he got a camaraderie with the record labels. Check me out so you can learn how to play the keys for Peanut. Happy Mother's Day. Hilarious. So I can learn how to play the keys for Peanut. I do. I need to learn how to formally play the piano. I can play little shit here and there. Play the keys? Keyboard. I hope that's what he means. Yeah. That's that one. Mm -hmm. Kiwi Yeah. You seen a small storage business? Something like that. Yeah. This is Jeffrey. Yeah, get you a food truck, nigga. You get you a nice little food truck. 
What the hell is this? Keep this. Mm. I don't know. The piano. Don't worry about it. The basis of songwriting. It's not for you. What's up with the Mac Lesson show? I haven't done the Mac Lesson show in years. Ten thousand is not a lot, but the thing is, you can you can invest it in something. Like a ten thousand, then you can go put a down payment on a food truck. Go down and hire you some day laborers and show them how to make wings and park that bitch somewhere and get to frying. Uh, you just got to be committed to doing it. Don't think of it as just a one-time flip. Think of it as an investment. See, we get some money. We think, okay, how can we turn 10 into 20 within a couple of days? We try to flip the shit and then go do some shit we ain't supposed to do. And then you go, go buy a brick. You go buy half a damn kilo and then go flip it to some old snitch-ass nigga. Who get caught <laughs> and they were like, What some the nigga you done sold the shit to, he get pinched and start giving up names. Well, I got this from a nigga named Ike. I got him I, I don't know his last name. He light skinned, he got a little fade, little Caesar. I know where he lived, but I don't know his last name. Then they got this nigga wearing a wire. And this nigga come over to your house. Hey, Ike, do you have some more of that cocaine for the same price I had bought it before? <laughs> Clearly, doing snitch talk. Like, no, man, I, I, ain't, I, ain't, I ain't really holding like that, man. That was a one-time flip. By flip, you mean redistribute the cocaine, correct? <laughs> wow, you really decorated the bando house. It's really appropriate for trapping. <laughs> <laughs> Nigga in there, your shit with snitch talk. <laughs> wow, I what kind of fish scales do you use? What do you use to cut the cocaine with? <laughs> Why are all these bitches in your kitchen with their titties out cutting cocaine? Are they helping with the narcotics distribution? Like, why are you talking like that, homie? Man. I was Cambodia. I didn't go to Cambodia. I went to um um went to Thailand. We we went to Malaysia. We had a good time in Malaysia. Me and Pina, we were staying in the jungle in Malaysia. Oh, in no, no, that was in Malaysia. We were in the jungle. Yeah. Bali was the island. We were yeah. on the island. And then we were... Yeah. We stayed in the cut. We were in Malaysia. We had to take a plane, take a five hour car ride, then take a boat ride to get to the resort we were in, the resort was in the damn jungle. This is what we had, all these kids, so we could do shit like that. And we were at this resort, and at night, like, wild fucking animals came out, and they had pictures of the animals, like night shots of the animals. Oh, like, remember yeah. that? I'm like, what, <laughs> I'm, the, what the... I'm thinking of Tanzania. No, 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 no. No, we were like, in the lobby of the lodge, and I'm like, what the fuck is that? It was like a, a damn... Tiger. <laughs> it was like a jaguar. Yeah, jaguar, tiger, bear. And they, well, they kind of come out at night. It was monkeys all over. It was, it was a tight resort, though. I mean, it was, it was some real fly shit. It was in the cut. That's where Brodon lives. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Remember when we went to, um, what did we do? Those, that high up bridge, and they just left us, and, and we were just standing because we had to take a boat. That was there. That's that, what I'm saying. Yeah, they that was just it. left they, us. They left it. Yeah, we were. We did like a little hike up a bridge and like. Yeah, to take a boat to get to it. Yeah, and these motherfuckers dipped out. I don't know why they left that. They left me and Peter. Yeah, sit there and flag another boat down. Yeah, we we literally had to flag down a random boat to take us back to our resort. Oh my god, damn. And they told us that there was alligators in the water. So yeah. People were bathing in the water. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, this is some bullshit. Number one sport in Thailand is 
Boy tie. Yeah. 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 Buy a rental property. Yeah, yeah. You can put that a down payment on a rental property. That's something. Yeah, but use it something that you can invest in. Don't don't use it as a one time flip. Don't go out there and get you a brick and try to flip that brick. Just use that as an investment. I, we've stopped in Tokyo like a plane stop, you know, but um, just at the airport. I haven't kicked it in Tokyo, but just kind of at the airport, you know, we we ate at the airport, and it looks cool. I, I got to get to Tokyo. I know we're gonna do some mink slide performances over there. We're almost done with the Mink Slide album. I'm going to try to have the Mink Slide album out by this summer. I'm going to get that knocked out. And then when I get the Mink Slide album knocked out, I'm going to start working on Hidden Colors 5. I'm trying to think, should I work on Hidden Colors 5 or that other movie, that other crime thriller I've been wanting to work on for a minute? Free tattoo for the family. What what city are you in, Mark Madness? Thailand, they're racist as well. I didn't see that. They were, really cool they were cool to us. Yeah, they were real cool to us in Thailand. Peanut sound like an island girl. And Peanut ain't no damn island girl. When I met Peanut, I thought she had an accent too. Peanut sounded like she just has an accent. Peanut's ass is from LA. Ain't <laughs> from no damn island. What's up, Farrah Fawcett? You say you're totally naked right now? Well, watch your pussy and go to sleep. Why are you telling us? Oh, you're telling us you're naked for some reason. Well, scrub your titties down and go to sleep. Buy a house and rent to the elderly. Any black people? I didn't see. Well, I saw some African people in Thailand. What's up, Chi Town? Shout out to Chicago. Thailand's oh, It's crazy. They just check in the street. <laughs> Hell yeah, nigga. Nigga, they be slanging pussy out there in Thailand, dude. They be slanging heavy. You know? We got a, me and Peanut got a, a massage out there in Thailand. Wasn't it, was the dude trying to grab a little cooch out there? <laughs> no. Oh. oh. <laughs> no. Was the, was the, the woman trying to find yeah, little lady, balls? Yeah, when the me and Peanut got a dual, we got a massage. And I was in the other room, <laughs> and the lady was getting real close to a motherfucker's nuts. I'm like, okay, I'm a little uncomfortable. Okay? I am a little uncomfortable. You dig? The dude was kind of doing that a little bit, slightly. Yeah. yeah. Mm hmm. Why do they want you to be naked when you take a when you get a Yeah, I, I kept my I, did I keep my drawers on? <laughs> no, you didn't. I didn't yeah, yeah. They told me to they take can't everything take yeah. It on. Yeah, they told me to take everything off and I'm like, this woman is getting real close to a nigga's taint. I'm like, this 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 ain't cool. The guy, um, I kept my mine's on. Mm -hmm. I had like a thong on. Have you heard of Sicelli's Island? I never heard of that one. Never heard of that one. Oh, Yes, pronouncing wrong. It's called like. S S uh, I forgot you heard of that place? Yeah. It's the site. I showed you that. Sashelis. How it's you? Like off the coast, I think, of Africa or something. Yep. Sinelis. Uh, see, ah, uh, can't remember. I gotta go to. I'm gonna go to Madagascar and all those places too. I gotta get back to Zimbabwe. I wanna buy property in Zimbabwe. I really, really like the Zimbabwe. The color of law. I haven't read that book. But I, I need to go back to the Seychelles. Seychelles. Seychelles, yeah. Seychelles, okay. And this book, Seychelles, okay. Ga no, I, I don't want to go to Ghana because they got like the U.S. military taken over there now. So I, I don't want to go there. That's basically an extension of this now. Or the, this is an extension of the U.S. Yeah, so I, I don't want to go to another satellite of the U.S. I wanted to go to Ghana. Yeah, I, I, I wanted to, but when I go places, I'm trying to work with the people to set up shop. You understand? I'm trying to create a, a protection mechanism. Say so the U.S. military is everywhere in Africa. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, but man, they, the, the Ghana, Ghanaian government, they, they're just allowing the U.S. military to go in there and do whatever they want. Yeah, I talked about Namibia earlier. I talked about them earlier. What about um, Sierra Leone or Senegal? One of those? Yeah, that I don't know. No. You'd be in Ghana. Yeah, I want to go to some African nations that's trying to build their weight up. Ghana will not offer a military base to the U.S. That's not what I'm hearing, James. That is not what I'm hearing. Sounds like they're going to let them go in there and set up shop. Come to Somaliland. You there? They're in Senegal, too. There's no military in Ghana. Y'all sure? Because from what I'm hearing is that you know they, they're going to let them in there and set up shop. That's what I'm hearing. I don't know how true it is, but it, I've been hearing reports on that. You, you heard the president said no. Okay. Man. They're expanding in Djibouti. Yeah, but I, I really enjoyed Zimbabwe. I really, really, really enjoyed Zimbabwe. I would I like Zimbabwe so much I would build a crib out there in Zimbabwe. And that'd be like a little summer home. I really like the vibe. The people, the people are just absolutely wonderful in Zimbabwe. I think I, I gotta renew. Do I gotta renew my passport? I know I gotta get TJ's back. All right. Anyway, let me get up out of here, man. I gotta see what's on TV tonight. What comes on TV tonight? Nothing. Oh, oh. <laughs> All right. Africa needs help, and they're making it. Africa needs help, and they're making it better. Who's making it better, Stacy? Who's making Africa better? Not the military. They ain't making that shit better. All right. There's no military in Ghana. Well, that's what they're saying. Got to hit up little Haiti. Time to eat the coochie. Look at this nigga. Hilarious. <laughs> Great show tonight. Anyway, y'all, let me get up out of here, y'all. It's been real. Yeah. Say goodbye to everybody, Mama Peanut. You dig? All right, we're about to get up out of here. I'm going to holler at you guys, man. Hidden Color Strong. You got to go eat the box. <laughs> please, please. I'm like Muhammad from 90 Day Fiance. I can't, it's, it's Ramadan. I can't eat. <laughs> Are you like me? It's, it's Kwanzaa. I can't eat it. It's, <laughs> I can't eat pussy on Juneteenth. <laughs> I'm going to claim every excuse. <laughs> All right, y'all. I'm out, man. Y'all be good. Y'all be good.